are here in Pasadena, California for Power Morphicon. It is insane already. It's Pandamorphium here. Starting off strong. Starting off strong. No, I like it. I like that one. That's, that's a good one. Yes, yes. There's a lot of fans here. Power Rangers here from all eras, from Mighty Morphin all the way to Super Mega Force. And we are bringing you a live stream from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. today, Pacific Standard Time, just giving you as much of Power Morphicon as we can right there in your homes, on your computers, on your tablets, on your laptops, on everything. And standing by me is one of the guys that helped put this whole thing together, Power Morphicon Live. It's Brian Ward from Shout Factory. What's going on? Hey, everybody. <laughs> uh, by the way, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled that we have you hosting this event. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's, I love Power Rangers. As a lot of people know, I grew up on Mighty Morphin back in the day. I saw the movie opening night <laughs> in the theaters. I saw the movie opening night. Yeah. yeah, it was a good time. I have a news and all that. So it was really good. So uh, so what are we expecting today? Power Morphicon itself and then Power Morphicon Live, of course. Today is a big deal. Uh, we did this at BotCon just a month ago or so. Uh, and, and we had so much fun there yep. that we decided to come here to Power Morphicon and do uh, something even bigger and even better. So uh, expect a lot of interviews that you'll be conducting. Uh -oh. Here from the floor, we'll be talking to cast, we'll be talking to crew, we'll be talking to, uh, we've got the president of Saban Brands, Ellie Deckel, wow. Brian Cassantini coming in a little bit later. I should have put on a jacket. Uh, you know, <laughs> we, we like to play it cash. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, so, cool, uh, yeah. Hey, what's so, up, President yeah. Saban? What's going on, you know? Yeah, so, uh, you know, expect big things today. We'll be showing uh, the panels. Uh, cer certain panels. Nice. A little later on today, uh, we will be having our Shout Factory live panel, which is our uh, trivia contest, oh. where we will be giving away one of the Power Rangers Legacy Collection helmets. What? So, uh, yeah. Is it know. in a box? It, it might be in a box. It's in a box! <laughs> That's right. So, yeah, we're, we're expecting big things, 11 to 5 today. You know, looking forward to it. That's awesome. Now, of course, Shout Factory's been putting out all the Power Ranger DVDs, as well as the other Saban properties, VR Troopers, Beetleborgs, Ninja Turtles, Next Mutation. But what is it about Power Rangers? What do you think that has gotten to a, a, such a popularity that we have an event like this, like Power Morphicon, that you guys even want to stream at? You know, it's one of those things where uh, the show itself, you'll notice from season to season, you're still dealing with five or six Rangers, yep. given powers, and yet, Saban has figured out a way to make it fresh and original each and every time. So even if you know that you're going to deal with six rangers fighting against monsters, you want to know the story, you get to know the characters, and you fall in love with people. And, and you know, you have those moments where you're laughing. Yeah. You have a couple of tearjerker moments. In 20 years, 21 seasons now of Power Rangers, there have been tearjerker moments. Yeah. And uh, I think it's that sort of thing. You get the kids early. And then you just let them stay with the franchise for now 21 seasons. And yeah. it's, it's been awesome. And it's a, it's a huge generation of fans. I mean, just looking around the floor right now, we have people young and old and older, just like, just like all kinds of Power Ranger fans from every single variation of Power Rangers. Do you have a favorite version? Do you have a favorite Power Ranger team? You know, it, people have asked me that because in the last two years that I've been producing the DVDs, yeah, um, I have watched all 20 seasons uh, in two years. So wow. I've, I've seen a lot of Power Rangers, and I gotta tell you, I, I think maybe my favorite might be Time Force, okay, or SPD. I am oh. I am a big fan with what Greg Aronowitz and the and the team did with uh, Power Rangers SPD, giving the Rangers sort of like. A police unit, you yeah. know, and they're not even the best part is they're not even the A team. They are the B team <laughs> that have been raised up. You know, like that's the sort of thing that, that you love about a show like Power Rangers. So, they're the mighty ducks of yeah, the Power Rangers. It is, team. It's pretty <laughs> the awesome. underdogs. <laughs>
I've got a show to direct, clearly, because yeah. if I step away, everything goes wonky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to actually introduce you to my friend Chip Lynn, who's the executive producer of the new series, Power Rangers Dino Charge. What? So, Andre, let me bring in Chip. All right, here we go. <laughs> Brian is morphing into Chip. Hello, Chip. How's hey. it going? Good to see Good. you. Nice to see you. Yes, yes. So as he said, the executive producer of the new Power Rangers series that's coming out, Dino Charge. Right. Welcome. Right. Thank so you. So is this your first uh, foray into the Power Rangers universe, or have you been involved before? Is this your first time executive producing? Uh, the first time I worked on the show was about 22 years ago when we did the pilot. Oh, wow. Right. right. And I worked for many, many years at that time. And then I went away for a while, came back, worked for Disney as the executive producers for a while, and then stepped away again, and now I'm back. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> so, uh, so everyone's excited. Of course, we're going through Super Mega Force right now. We got new episodes coming out, but then, of course, Down on Charge happening after that. What can we expect? What can you expect from Down on Charge that may be a little different from Power Rangers in the past, or maybe a little bit familiar to what we've seen before? Well, some of, the, some of my favorite seasons that we did in the past were like um, Power Rangers in Space, uh, Power Rangers Time Force. Those seasons, I think I wrote all of the episodes. Oh, nice. Um, and directed quite a few of them. And just as we concentrated on characters and having a complete arc over the whole season, we're going to try to do the same thing with Dino Charge. Nice. Try to make sure that all the characters are interesting, that the whole universe is consistent and interesting, and, uh, and try to do a few things that we've never done before, which makes it a little bit risky. Oh. But if we succeed, it could be really cool. Really, really cool. Well, you know what? If you if you watch the, the Japanese show, Koryuger, which was directed primarily by Koichi Sakamoto, who did the um, who did second unit and, and some first unit for years and years and years with me on Power Rangers, if you ever watch the Japanese show that he did, uh, there's a, just that just the sheer number of Rangers and um, the fantastic fights and the kind of elements that are in that show made it particularly difficult to adapt it. <laughs> but they said, okay, if you can do it, go for it. So that's what we're doing. So we're going to see a number of different rangers. Yes, if you looked at Koryu, you're going to see that there, typically there's six rangers, sometimes ah. seven. There's even more than that this time. Oh. And if you want to know how many, you have to watch uh, Koryu. All right, so are these going to all be new people or could we expect some possible cameos from rangers past in this? Well, remember that uh, the previous season had like legendary rangers, so there mm -hmm. were a lot of cameos. Yeah. So we probably aren't going to concentrate too much on that. Okay. Cameos are always a trick because you have to kind of try to warp one story into another right. and have it all make sense. Right. Um, and that's difficult. So we probably aren't going to emphasize that this year. Okay. So you're trying to make Dino Charge like its own. I mean, obviously it's part of the Power Rangers legacy, but you want to focus on specifically those rangers and exactly. making its own complete story exactly. through the arc and everything. Yeah. And like I said, with so many extra rangers this year, it makes it even more difficult to bring in outside faces. It's always fun to, and it's always great. Yeah. One of my favorite episodes ever was, the one that I wrote was with um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came in for a couple episodes. Yes! It was fantastic. <laughs> and I remember we were all sitting in the, in, the, in the conference room watching it air that day, and uh, I remember the prop guy was sitting next to me said, as, as the, you know, we were watching the screen, and suddenly the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they, they come screaming onto the screen, and, and, and I remember somebody said, about 10 million kids just beep their pants right now. <laughs> and that was, and it's so true, right? Because yeah. as a kid, I always wanted all the superheroes to meet each other, but they never did. Yeah. And suddenly we got to do it. It was fantastic. That's a rare thing. I mean, of course, we have uh, fan fiction on the internet, but uh, it's a rare thing to see two large properties like that Very come rare. together. And especially with one previously being animated and previously being a comic book, to be like, how are they going to get them together? And you guys did it. You guys had the we did Power it. Rangers and the And Ninja it was Turtles. a fun story. It was a really fun story. Yeah. yeah one of so, my favorites. So much fun. So um, so I mean, this just sounds exciting. It sounds like it's going to be uh, a, a new part to the Power Rangers universe and something fun. Uh, it will be. Uh, what is just your thoughts about the Power Rangers universe as a whole, as a legacy? Like being here at Power Morphicon, you're seeing all these fans here, you're seeing Power Rangers still being large after over 20 years. What well, does that mean to you? Well, this show was originally developed in Japan 37 years ago. Oh, wow. So you think 22, um, we're working on season 22 now. Yeah. Um, but that's nothing compared to Japan. They've done 37. But it is amazing. When we first did it, nobody suspected it would go on this long. <laughs> nobody thought it. Um, maybe Haim Saban, he had a vision that nobody else understood. Yeah. Uh, when we watched the pilot, after we did, the first pilot was called Dino Rangers. When we did the pilot, we all watched it and we all thought, boy, we better sharpen up our resumes because this is going to go nowhere. <laughs> but Haim Saban, Haim Saban just kind of grinned. He knew that this was something special. And so did every other kid. Um, so it's, it's a shock that it goes on this way. But when you look around at all the thousands of people who really enjoy it and it will go to such a great effort to come here and express it. Yeah. I mean, I walk around here, people know my name. I'm just a, I'm just a few words on the screen. I don't even, I'm not... I'm not even a ranger, and yet still 
they know me for some reason. Yeah. And it's very humbling and it's really wonderful to see the kind of energy they bring to it. And I hope it goes on forever, you know, past me. I, I think so. I think it, it can keep going. What do you think it is about Power Rangers specifically that connects to fans though? Um, I think that what Haim came up with, and actually the Japanese started it and Haim adapted it very well. He, he realized that every kid wants to be a superhero and this gives them the, you know, you get to see five average kids do something worthwhile and earn being a ranger. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and they're kids with attributes like any other kid, like I was when I was a kid. And little boys and girls can see that and they realize, wow, that could be my friend or that could be me. Yeah. And I think that's what they love about it, that could be me. And it gives them something to inspire them to dream. And, uh, you know, and that's, what, that's, kind of, that's kind of what being a kid is all about. So I think that it tapped into what being a kid is all about. Cool. Now, will Dino Charge, will we be seeing them as teens again? Or are they going to be any kind of special um, force or group or anything? Or can you say? I can, I, I can say that they all look like they're in their teens and early 20s. <laughs> okay. But a couple of them might be a little bit older than that. All right. All right. Well, we'll leave it at that. Dino Charge, look for it soon on Nickelodeon. I guess it's going to be sharing. Right. I guess so, yeah. It's going to yep. be on Nickelodeon. Starting in February. Oh, starting in February. There we go. See, I didn't know that. So there we go. Power Rangers Dino Charge, starting in February on Nickelodeon. Be sure to look for it. Thanks, Thank you everybody. so much, Chip. Thank Thanks you so much for talking to me, man. Sure. I really appreciate it. The Power Ranger fans are some of the most loyal fans I've ever seen. I mean, I cannot believe 20 years later that people are still so fascinated by the show. fans are amazing. Whatever we gave to them, they give back, back to us. At least they give back to me tenfold when I meet them. We early on realized that the, you know our success was entirely based on the fact that we had very passionate fans. I have fans that come and train here at my jiu-jitsu academy and stuff. The fans are phenomenal. Power Ranger fans are the best because they're diehard. Being a Power Ranger fan never goes away. Our fans are awesome. You can, some of them are still fans that show up who I've now known for 20 years. Now it's like, hey, on Facebook, I, I friend all my fans, I'll answer their questions and stuff like that. If I had to describe the fans, uh, first I'd say we were surprised that they were as young as they were, uh, but then uh, uh, we were so pleased at how dedicated they were. A week after it premiered, the, the initial ratings came and they were to the point where they were kind of, we were kind of shaking our heads. Uh, a, a month later, we were the number one show uh, across the board for all kids. Two months later, we were on the cover of TV Guide. And 20 years later, fans still love the show so much, there's an entirely fan-run convention called Power Morphicon. Well, for me, Power Rangers has always been a big part of my life. I, I grew up watching it ever since I was a little kid. I was hooked, absolutely hooked on that first episode I ever saw. Well, I was really big into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, dinosaurs, and Transformers. Kids really loved dinosaurs back then. So I see this commercial for something with teenagers turning into dinosaurs that are also giant robots and they all use karate. So there was no question I was going to be hooked. They're really relatable to a degree. You know, they're teenagers, they go to school just like we do, yet they have this whole other life that they lead. That was actually my cell phone. Like all the fans, we all have like the communicator beep for our, our uh, ringtones on our phone. So like when we go to conventions, we'll hear that sound like 50 million times. So many people grew up with Power Rangers as a part of their background that they are fans by default, whether they want to or not. We are a part of their lives. Well, for me personally, I love the action. The action is, is what defined it and along with the adventure and the comedy, PR made for a very good show. So one day I'm flipping through the channels and I see part two of the wedding. Um, cause I, and I missed part one. So I'm like, Rita's back. Rita and Zed are married. That's it. I'm never missing another episode of this. You know, people talk about Power Rangers as being science fantasy. And people look at how the show can do basically any genre it wants to, depending on the season. And I think nowhere is that more clear than the first season of the show. You've, you've got the alien wizards. You've got the dinosaurs. You've got the giant robots. You have alternate dimensions. I mean, the first season literally does 
every stock science fiction fantasy genre story except for time travel and alternate universes and season two does time travel four times. I don't think you could set a better template for everything the show does successively unless you did something as ambitious as that first season because it really it does everything you could possibly want in a kid's show. And then you got Tommy. I I don't think the show would have gone more than 40 episodes without Tommy. Green Ranger Mania drove this show. I originally was hired for like five to ten episodes on uh, Power Rangers. And, um, you know, Tommy again was the good guy, then he was the bad guy, and then the Green Ranger lost his powers. When I lost the powers, really, everyone kind of freaked out. You know, they contacted the network and was like, hey, we got to bring the Green Ranger back. Literally, uh, parents were calling, tell, saying that their kids are not going to eat if the Green Ranger don't come back. Um, my earliest memory of the show had to be when the Green Ranger came on the scene. And it was the first episode where the team didn't win in the end. It was a to be continued and the Green Ranger was kicking their butt for five parts. And it wasn't until the very end that they finally win. So. I just remember standing over my brother not knowing what he was going to do next, not knowing how the Rangers were going to come back from this, and at the same time still liking the Green Ranger, like wishing he was a part of the team, and at the end of the, the five-part saga, he became a part of the team, so he instantly became my favorite Ranger, and it's something I'll never forget. So I think what I brought to the role was, um, you know, being humble, being likable, being at first kind of a loner, so I, I think kids identified with that. Some of the kids out there that maybe didn't have friends at the time, I, was, I, I pretty much was the new guy in town and I had to make friends. So I think a lot of people could relate to that and that's why my character became so popular. He's introduced on the thinnest pretext imaginable. Hi, I'm the new kid. And then he's hurt terribly, granted by an alien witch, but he's still hurt and rejected and he spends most of that first season pretty much repenting for what had been done to him. Tommy is my number one. We've changed a lot of people's lives. I, I hear that a lot. He got me to work out, be strong, um, just change. Now I'm one away from black belt. I'm crazy fighter. Every like kid out there had at least one ranger that they related to. You know what the crazy thing is? When we were on the television show, you didn't know how impactful the show was on fans because you're working, you know, 12 to 15 hour days, you go home, go to sleep, and then you go back to work. There is, um, there's a, a, a soulfulness and a real sweetness about the Power Rangers fans. And in particular, people that love Bulk and Skull. I got a Facebook message from a fan that said, three reasons I should get back from Afghanistan alive. My favorite restaurant, my wife, and to meet Paul Schreier and Jason Narvi at the next convention. That's heavy. That's heavy. You're a part of someone's life who is doing important things. They're like, you changed my life. You were my idol. You were the person that, you know, you're a girl that looked like me. I've never seen a girl like you on TV. You know, you were a superhero. I mean, it's so many different emotions. And at that moment, you go, wow, you know, it's different when you're a kid. And it's different when they look up to you and they kind of grow up with you. You know, there was something that Royce Heron said at Power Morphic a few years ago that's really stuck with me about the show's success. And her thought was that it wasn't just that they were role models for kids in the costumes, that the kids were basically upstanding citizens on the show, that the rangers were giving back to their community, they were doing recycling drives, they were doing charity everything, they were teaching kids martial arts. The show really was like civics class for kids. It was teaching you being a good citizen doesn't require you put on stupid outfits or drive around in giant robots. That It was just telling you give back to your community, that makes you as close to a Power Ranger as you can be. I think there's something really beautiful about that, and I don't think you get that out of a lot of superhero programs. I went to a boxing uh, match, and, and this big, huge bouncer standing there, he's like, hey man, you're the Power Ranger. And I'm like, wow, that's cool, you, you got kids? He's like, no, nah, man, I'm watching myself. <laughs> I'm like, wow, okay, well that's interesting. And I'm like, okay, well, I wouldn't expect it. You know, he's like 32, and, a Power Ranger fan, but it's the martial arts. It, it was, it put everybody in. You know, there were so many people that that watched it 
for the martial arts aspect of it because you know people grew up watching Bruce Lee and 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 you know various other people that were exciting to them as martial artists and now here you had teenagers kids that were martial artists and that were doing positive things we hooked up with Dare America uh, in order to be ambassadors against drugs for kids and uh, as part of that we did an appearance at the um, the first live appearance of the Power Rangers at the Universal Amphitheater. How do you guys feel about female superheroes out there? <laughs> Jason Narvi and I coming out on stage at the Universal Amphitheater <laughs> when we shut down the freeways around Los Angeles and having our breath taken away by a sea of flashbulbs going off. It was like the Beatles. They had closed down this major theme park in Los Angeles and shut down the freeways. Uh, which was the headline that went out on national news that night. As I got older, I started to become really fascinated uh, by the show from a production standpoint. Despite it being the adaptation of the Super Sentai in Japan, which was already a very successful show in its own right, I think they've done very well to maintain originality and it would have been far too easy for them just to copy and paste. The foam rubber suits were all intact. The props could just be shipped from Japan and new fights could be staged. You could literally build a completely new show out of the same parts. And the animated shows that came before were mostly just hacking pieces out. Power Rangers would build completely new episodes from the pieces they were given. I think Power Rangers from the onset was its own beast. It's the only true blending of two different cultures. It's, it's Japanese and American culture blended together into a single um, product. And it's, it's really unlike anything else on TV. Hey, I'm Bruno, and I'm a Power Rangers super fan. In addition to loving the show because it was fun and it had martial arts and the dinosaurs and all that great stuff, I was really interested in the show for all the different creative elements, such as puppets, animatronics, special effects, pyro, uh, miniatures. And all of the stuff that they did on Power Rangers that was so cool and that worked so well, they did on a really low budget. And it was stuff that you could kind of say, I could sort of see how they did this. And you could go to your local craft store or hardware store and buy foam and plaster, latex. You could actually construct your own Ultra Zord set similar to what they did in season three with Titanus and not spend a lot of money doing it. And then of course dry ice makes it more fun. And how cool is it you could go to your local toy store and buy the exact same Power Morpher, Blaster, or even Megazord that you saw on the show. It's like owning a television prop, except at a very reasonable price. And that certainly helped contribute to my compulsive toy collecting. Sometimes we would actually have the prop guy just buy a toy, a little toy come in. We would use the toy in the, in the actual show. Power Rangers really inspired me creatively growing up and continues to. And I still watch the show, and I'm happy to say I do. So we've got fans from, from 4 to 34 who, at one point in their life, if not today, they were passionate and excited and hardcore fans of Power Rangers. And that's really remarkable and exciting and something that we're very proud of. We're, we're very... Uh, humbled by and and we are looking and working on ways to celebrate that with our fans through the show and through other things that we're going to be doing and uh, and certainly not just celebrate the 20 years past but begin to uh, lay the foundation for years to come um, and we're thrilled that kids today are responding uh, as, as enthusiastically as ever have, and it, it gives us great hope for many more years of great Power Rangers to come. These are the keepers of the Rangers right here. <laughs> so, uh, so first off, 
how amazing is this convention? Just oh my it's God. crazy. Like so many Power Ranger fans here. Did you ever expect something like Power Morphicon to be this huge? You know, we've been coming for a few years now, and this is by far the most energetic, the most dressed up, <laughs> the most fired up Morphicon crowd I've ever seen, and more than ever before. Yeah, no, it's just amazing that this was created by the fans. When we bought back the franchise, we were so excited to come the first time to this, and yeah. it was just an amazing experience. And it's always nice to go from Comic-Con to this and see the incredible passion that just all the fans, you know, demonstrate on the floor here. Yeah, and that has to be a special thing because I mean, obviously, Comic Con has so many different things going on, but this is specifically for the Power Rangers. Oh fans. yeah, <laughs> and yeah. how many, you know, amazing, you know, franchises support this kind of passionate fandom? It's just, it's amazing. We're so lucky and thrilled. You know, we spent some time with our Power Force fans earlier today, and to see the energy that they put in year round and then bring it here to Pasadena, uh, yourself included, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is really a thrill. And, it, you know, we're at a place now with Power Rangers where we're seeing parents bringing their children because they remember when they were kids yes. and they were watching the show and now they can share it with their kids who are watching it still today. Yeah, that's the fascinating part because there's not many franchises that you see going on so long that the parents and the kids can enjoy it and they come right. in at different times. And that's the neat thing about Power Rangers. And speaking of which, you have another season that's about to happen, yeah. Dino Charge. What can we expect from this new season, Brian? Amazing things. <laughs> Amazing things. Uh, we're thrilled to have Chip Lynn join us. Uh, he's an amazing executive producer and he just has a really great vision for this new season and we're just thrilled to support him in achieving that vision and as we all know dinosaurs <laughs> come on they Get work with them, yeah. <laughs> um, they, you know the fans love them and we love them and uh, we're excited to bring it to life in this new season oh, you right. know each year of the past several years Power Rangers has gotten stronger the show has gotten richer and stronger and better. The fans have gotten more and more energetic. And all of that energy is now moving into Power Rangers Dino Charge. And from what we can see, it's going to be our best year yet. Yeah. Oh, all yeah. right. You heard it here. Yeah. You dropped it. Uh, yeah, seriously. <laughs> seriously. It's got, it is. Awesome. It is. Awesome. We will not disappoint. <laughs> Good. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Like we said, it's coming out February 2015 on Nickelodeon. Now. You guys have really done a really good job with working with the fans, particularly working with Make-A-Wish Foundation. And you guys had a very, very awesome thing that happened this morning, part of the opening ceremonies. Can yes. you tell us what happened with that? Yes. Well, first off, let's go back in time a bit. Yeah. Power Morphicon started through a Make-A-Wish wish. Oh. A, a, a child who was fighting for his life wished for a Morphicon, and it was created. And that started now eight years ago, and each two years it's grown and grown and grown to be this amazing event that we have today. Yeah. So part of this morning's opening ceremony was a celebration of Make-A-Wish, and w of course, wouldn't you know it, we're st there are still kids fighting for their lives, there are still kids making that wish, and we had a group of Make-A-Wish kids who wished to be Power Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> and we brought them here to Los Angeles with Make-A-Wish Foundation. We trained them in ranger training <laughs> yesterday nice and this morning they helped the power rangers save morphicon <laughs> from an evil horde yes and that was pretty magical for us it was magical for them and it, it's really a, a privilege to be able to make a young child who's fighting for their life to help the, some of their dreams come true and to bring a smile to their face yeah. and that's part of the spirit of power rangers part of the spirit of these fans that are here and uh, it was a very fitting, fitting opportunity to celebrate that this morning. It was a beautiful thing. It was fun to watch. I mean, if you would have seen it, and I think we're going to show it uh, a little bit later on, but it's, it was really cool to see the kids out there fighting and everything. And then confetti came out. It was, it was pretty awesome. You guys <laughs> did a great job. And it's so cool to see you working directly with Make-A-Wish on these types of things. It's very awesome. Yeah. So is there, a, is, there anything that, uh, is there anything that you want to say just to the fans out there just for supporting Power Rangers for all these years? Well, thank you. Uh, having been there from the very beginning, I have seen the power of Ranger Nation and you fans that love Power Rangers so much. You're why we keep doing this. You're why we work so hard to keep the show coming back year after year. 
thank you for your support. Thank you for your, your, your guidance along the, along the way. Thank you for being here. And for those of you who aren't here, be sure to mark your calendars for the next one. Yeah. No. Ditto. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks per for your passion. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. And thanks a lot to Make-A-Wish uh, for being a part of this too. And I believe that we're actually going to see a clip of that right now. So check out this awesome opening presentation with the Power Rangers and Make-A-Wish. <laughs> Yeah! 
so much coming up for you guys here at Power Morphicon Live, so keep watching PowerMorphiconLive.com for all the cool stuff. And speaking of cool stuff, here's a cool new featurette given to you from the good people at Shout Factory. It's good to be bad. <laughs> here's a clip. you got to have a strong villain on a show like Power Rangers, primarily because the whole premise of the show is good versus evil. Power Rangers definitely would not be Power Rangers without really, really good villains. There's nothing that bonds you more than a villain. You don't buy into these, the danger that these kids are, are trying to save the world from if you aren't scared of this, this impending doom. We always start off from a starting point, like let's make the villains as interesting as the superheroes. What I loved about it is that, you know, you're on the streets in LA and there's this big villainous or big villain and they just looked crazy but that's what made the show very popular unless someone is causing problems and conflict it's not fun it's not fun to watch <laughs> when everything is just harmonious and everyone's getting along so you need somebody like Trakina to stir it up it was just such a dream job for an actor you know you came in every day and it was happy time you know, you had all these amazing kids running around, giving you a hard time. My son growing up with Rita, you know, he would say, Mommy, why couldn't you be the, the pink ranger? But the kids at school would go, Rita! And I'd go, mm, you know, and they would run away. And it was like contagious. It was fun. The villain is the most fun part. It's the part where you get to be super animated and super evil. And when you're good, you have to be nice all the time. And I loved being really bad. Oh, it's always fun to play a villain, isn't it? I enjoyed uh, when I got to be Bad Cat. That was fun. Once you become the Power Ranger, it's a lot of being so good. I mean, Cat did everything from diving, ballet, singing. There was nothing that girl couldn't do. <laughs> Whereas when I was the evil cat, I got to play a little bit more, I guess. So I enjoyed that. I'd like them to have maybe had my character go back to that at some point, but they never did. Those stupid teenagers don't know who they're messing with! Ah! Get the putties! It's time! <laughs> All right, take that! Ah! So, how do I describe Rita Repulsa? From my standpoint, she's very misunderstood. I, I really feel a lot of sympathy for her, being that I, I was her, her voice anyway. Lord Zed on the Power Rangers. I liked him because he was a whole character. He was wholly evil. I mean, there's no two ways about it. I mean, he was uncompromisingly evil. Goldar was changed a little as we got deeper into the later years with him. It was not a normal character for this show. It was a very internalized performance. It truly was a tortured character. It was, you know, between a rock and a hard place is to do the right thing and what was the right thing. And I really enjoyed playing him because he was multi-layered. He had a lot of stuff going on and it was fun. <laughs> Back off, Fang Face! The good guys are here! Get off our planet! Because we're the Power Rangers! And we're not backing down! Yeah! 
Tony says, Care, I want you to do this guy with the gold wings. I don't think he has much of a part, but you're the only one that probably can bring the, the big voice thing to him. And I attached just some gravelly dumb voice to him. I only had like four or five lines. Six weeks later, Tony calls and says, we're in. Oh, yeah, and your character, he's bigger than I thought, than we any of us thought. I said, really, what, what's the story? Well, he's kind of like the, the henchman. He's kind of like the head henchman. I said, oh my gosh, okay. Oh no, where is he? Where is he? I am Lord Zed, Emperor of all I see. You have failed to complete the mission assigned to you. I will now resume command. Prepare the pass for my return. I guess it was the second season, they were doing auditions for monsters. And I saw Lord Zed. I said, who's this? So I read the description and I read the paragraph of dialogue. And something just struck me about it. The writing was good, the, the language was superior. I asked Scott, I go, you mind if I read for Lord Zed? I thought he was just one of these monsters who would come and go. And he says, oh, sure, take it home. So uh, I took Lord Zed page home and a couple of other monsters. But it became clear to me that I, I forgot about the other monsters. I wanted to concentrate on Lord Zed. Relax, my vision of ugliness. It was fun to be able to chew the scenery like that. They had to get a special mic for me, because I have a tendency to, to break mics with that voice. <laughs> it's time to bring the Power Rangers to their knees! Yeah. Their end is near! I knew I was in trouble. I wasn't going to be able to sustain the voice. And I know season one, probably through the first two thirds, I hadn't found the voice. It just was, you know, funky. I mean, it was there, but it was all, all in my throat. First we separate Jason from the others. Then Rita grows you real tall. And then we crush him. And I found a way to roll Goldar's voice over the top of my chords. So there's a lot of air in the voice. There's a lot of air. It's not, it's, I'm not, what they call scratching the cord. It's a subtle, subtle little, but I could feel it. You three darlings have been personally chosen by His Majesty Lord Zed. Lord who? The great emperor of evil, the desperado of despair. Believe me, it is quite an honor. And I would have to have my headset pretty hot, just like, just like rockers that need their monitors hot. They gotta be able to hear what they're doing and the placement. And as long as I had good hot headsets, there, good, got it in my head, good to go. Uh, 45 minutes, clean. I could walk away after 45, record anything, had full range. For the journey to Earth, I will need a crew of my best warriors! Oh, oh, me, me, me! And the demon talks, pick me! Rygog! Ah, yes, my lady! You will be second in command. You will navigate the oceans as well as the skies. They made the movie of Power Rangers Turbo, and Hilary Shepard played Diva Talks. And during the shooting, she got pregnant, and so she wasn't able to do the, the series. So I auditioned and um, was cast as Diva Tox. And I had never seen her. So when I auditioned the first time, it was never having seen her done it. And so it was interesting because we both had very similar takes on the character. So that was, that was cool. I just wanted to be here personally to extend my congratulations. Get them! It was a blast to be Diva Tox and order my minions around and get the Power Rangers because they were, of course, my arch enemy. And I also had the privilege of playing my sister, who was called Demetria, who was there to help the Power Rangers. Is not who you are much more than the Power Rangers, Tommy? Are the questions you have the reasons your faces have these expressions? Well, Zordon told us he'd send someone to take his place, but. We really didn't know what to expect. Would you be surprised to learn that there are many unexpected events in your future, Rangers? 
I think I brought a lot of good camp and shtick. One of the nicest reviews I got was from TV Guide, and they said I was like Catwoman's Julie Newmar. And that was really flattering and exciting because I was very big and conniving, and it was just a lot of fun to be able to be over the top and to wear those kinds of costumes. Yes! Yes! Oh, I love it! Dimitri has friend destroyed by her own precious rangers! What was really nice is I knew martial arts, and so the producers who cast me had me actually fighting with the rangers, which hadn't been done before. So that was really fun to have some scenes where I got to work with the rangers, or once I took the red ranger and tied him up and had rats crawling all over him, things like that, so that was fun. I want him to suffer all the trials and tribulations he put me through. I want him to beg for mercy. In your dreams. <laughs> it never happened, Diva Talks. One of my favorite episodes was the pizza episode where I'd lost my memory and I was working in the pizza parlor not realizing I was Divatox. And my minions were trying to get me back to realize who I was, and so that was fun. Yeah, what is it, buddy? Divatox, don't you recognize me? Yeah, I know a lot of guys with aquariums on their heads. You could be any one of them. But, Divatox, it's me, Porto. There were just so many fun scenes that you get to play. Like one scene when I shrunk the rangers and I got to have a tongue that was like 15 you know, inches long and to try and eat them or something. It's the fantasy of it and the, and the cartoon of being a live action cartoon is, is a lot of fun. Tell me, Mirror, who's the most beautiful girl in the universe? I am Kramami and I can tell you what you see. Go ahead then, as if I don't already know the answer. Um, you are the most beautiful, as well as a lot of other girls on Terra Venture, of course. A lot of other girls? <clears throat> you get down there and steal the beauty from every single one of them, or I'll feed you to my father. Got it? Trakina is, um, a spoiled princess daughter of Scorpius, who's used to getting her way all the time and pretty much doing whatever she wants, regardless of the consequences. Amy is stunning. She's just a stunningly beautiful, gorgeous woman, and like her outfit and everything that they did to bring that character to life was just fabulous. Trakina's makeup was very elaborate, and a lot of people don't even realize this, but the suit that I wore most of the time was a cat suit and it went across like with an open neck like this. All of the stuff that people could see on my neck was stenciled on. It was makeup. My hands were all makeup and then my face had a lot of makeup. Hair was all concealed so it took quite a bit of work to get all that underneath the headgear. It was just a lot of a lot of steps to get me to camera ready. I'd like to stay for dinner but I got a hell of ship to catch. Not so fast! You're not going anywhere. You promised you'd let us go. Hello, I'm evil. I lied. One of the best things that happened to me from being on the show was meeting Amy. She's my wife, <laughs> so we met on the show. It's an interesting story when people say, so how did you two meet? <laughs> to say, oh, we met working on a TV show, and he was a good guy and I was a bad guy, and they're always like, what? <laughs> you know, but it, it is an interesting story. Humans, diabolical! They built their cities right on top of our palace! Have they? Just look! <laughs> they built their ugly city on our sacred ground! No palace, no queen, no ultimate power! We will have our palace back after we destroy the miserable city brick by brick. We were lucky to have Diabolico, which I think is one of the coolest villains on Power Rangers, because he wasn't all evil. I mean, I see him raising the character of Ryan Mitchell as somewhere in there, he was trying to do something. And then when Queen Banshira comes down later in the season, he kind of ends up fighting her I don't know, he's an interesting villain to me, because he's, you can't really figure him out. Well, well, if it isn't the Power Rangers. I am Vipra. I'm glad we finally met, so I can destroy you. I would say Vipra was a troublemaker. She was a half human, half snake sorceress. And I think that she was more like a fun, evil character, but she actually just had a little minions do stuff for her. 
Once it's recharged, I'll lay waste to Mariner Bay. So our Queen Banshura will rise. Again. We met Jennifer, bubbly, bright personality, and we didn't know who she was. She introduced herself, you know, as herself, not as, oh, I'm playing this role. And then we found out later, oh, she's playing with the Viper character. We were just like, really? Like, no way, because we couldn't see any signs of a villain in this person. Her costume made her look so scary, but she never stopped laughing when she was on set, which was very rare again, because she was always second unit. So the few times we actually did get to work together, I loved that girl. I always remember this laugh, this laugh coming from, from Jennifer. It was really hard. Because I, I mean, I love to laugh, and my laugh is very robust and real. But when you have me do an evil laugh, it, it was it was really hard. So I did have to constantly go on ADR to do it over and over again. <laughs> ah, it was terrible. It was terrible. No, I admit, I, it was it, like my laugh was so bad on on the show. I, I can't even. I, I I I will never be able to watch myself. If I can't rule the present, then I'll just rule the past! In the name of Time Force, I place you under arrest! You don't know what you're up against! You don't know what you're up against, Rancic! The bad guy from our season, the main villain, was Vernon Wells, who was such a joy to work with. He's one of the best bad guys out there. And when they got Edward Albert and they got Vernon to be on the show, they were shocked that they were able to get him. I mean, because these guys have done so much quality work and, let's face it, motion pictures and, and you know, working on Mad Max with Mel Gibson. My dad was just, like, losing his mind. And, of course, I was so excited um, a lot because of Weird Science, because of Vernon's part in Weird Science, and that was right in my age demographic. They had so many years of professional experience that for those of us that were relatively new to this, we were like sponges soaking off of what they did, so it made the show as a whole a hundred times better. I wouldn't be smiling if I had your future. Ah, but the future is full of surprises. The first day on set, I was like, are you Vernon Wells? And he's like, yeah. And she came running over and leapt into my arms with her legs around my waist and her hands around my, my neck. And she went, so who are you playing? And I went, I think I play the guy that kills your boyfriend. And she went, I don't like you. And walked away. <laughs> it was just this amazing, like, three minutes of my life. I was like, who the hell was that? And that was, and is to this day, our relationship. I keep in touch with him. I see him and his wife you know, very frequently. Erin Cahill is still one of my best friends. I see Erin all the time and I adore her. And I run into the whole cast at different functions. I see them. And it's just like we've all never left. You know, we're all back together and we have so much fun. There's only one way to have true power in this century. Cash. <laughs> Smart as you are sweet. Katie and I got along famously. I mean, she was <laughs> just out of control to work with. I mean, seriously, she was. And she just loved her thing, you know. I mean, I'm sure she slept in her costume. She was just so into being that character. Daddy, there's six rangers now. What are we going to do? The Rangers have the power of the Quantum Ranger, but I'm going to get Quantasaurus Rex! The costume. Oh, was it fun. I had so much grief in that costume. It was unbelievable. I think the first scene of the first day of shooting, I tore the ligaments in my knee because the boots were so heavy. I mean, the whole costume looked wonderful, I, I have to admit, but uh, it had its limitations. I would... Uh, keep getting stuck in the toilet. Whenever they put the costume on me with the huge shoulder pads, I would go to the toilet and I would turn and then I was jammed. 
I couldn't turn either way or get out the door, so they'd have to dismantle the toilet to get me out. So they made this rule that I was not allowed to use the toilet in my trailer. Um, I kept getting stuck in it. And the only way I could relax was to actually lay in the trailer on the floor with the top end of my body out the door because the whole lot of me wouldn't fit in. It was, it was a lot of fun at times. Ransick! There's nowhere to run, traitor. But Ransick, I... What? Uh... Take him away. The end of it was interesting, the way they made that play out. I thought it was very well done, you know, like the, the megalomaniac in the whole thing was not my character. It was the robot, which I thought was a great twist to the whole thing. And then the fact that, that my character had to defeat him and then the way they took that back to discover that he had been this doctor who had discovered me they tied it together really nicely that you you understood where all the characters came from and in basically coming so close to destroying my own daughter was where i think they made a great passion play really you know that he just went you know enough you know i'm finished and then they did the reunion show, and he goes back and he's a Hawaiian shirt, and he's a really cool dude. Um, I thought that was a lot of fun. It was, it was just kind of out there. Ah, even now, our armies are being reborn. <laughs> there is a new org. Go find him. He's wreaking havoc. On the city. Yes, yes, right away. We had Elia playing Master Org, and then Danny as Jindrax and Sin Wong playing Toxica. Elia, I barely ever really saw him. It seemed like he was in hair and makeup forever, all day long. But I also think he was on the other unit, mostly, fighting the helmet heads, and we were on the first unit, you know, acting. Sin and I had some scenes where we were, you know, making fun of each other. I kept calling her grandma because she was supposed to be super old, but super sweet girl, super sweet. Danny also, love him. And we saw them more than we would see Master Org. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is give you a light top coat to protect against chipping and cracking. For the last time, I'm an evil space ninja, not a male model. Hmm. Just a light trim and buff. See, I told you, no fashion sense, huh? We had a villain who was comedic, and the fans didn't like it. They wanted the villain to be serious, and I was like, man, dude, he's funny. And his uh, nieces, Mara and Capri, they were goofy and dopey and sort of did stupid stuff, and it was much more comedic, and the fans were not that psyched about it. And they wonder why I have acid reflux. And it's funny because the guy who played Lothor, the goofy villain, came back for the reunion show the next year and he wouldn't play his goofiness. He was serious because he was so blown apart by the fan reaction of him being goofy that he didn't want to be goofy anymore. So we couldn't get him to go back to being his character. The back! We had some awesome villains. Vexicus, that was my favorite villain because Shane's character had a lot to do with Vexicus and he was actually really cool, wicked fighter. I don't understand. I thought you were dead. I mean, the island was destroyed. Well, I was lucky, Tommy. From the looks of it, we both were. Well, Anton Mercer was a scientist. You know, he's a wealthy scientist. Um, who was experimenting with DNA and genetics, had a corporation and had legitimate scientific interests and had a son who he didn't realize was a Power Ranger and is a single dad. Mezigog, on the other hand, separate from Anton Mercer, is an evil dinosaur humanoid who wants to rule the world. As long as I am alive, my plan to bring back our time of glory will go on as scheduled Power Rangers or no Power Rangers. Mezagog is a pretty mean guy. He, uh, he's always trying to take over the world and just do really evil things and we're always trying to stop him. I have to give Doug Sloan a lot of credit. Doug Sloan is 
very creative producer of the Power Rangers at that time. And he and I talked about how we wanted to scare kids. Doug just said, you know, I want you to make it scary as, you know, beep. So I took that as a great opportunity, uh, wanting to really scare kids. I have waited <gasps> far too long to allow an insignificant teenager to get in my way. Now, where are the dino gems? It was really important to me that Mezagog was nuanced, and it was important to me that Mezagog had a lot of layers to his character, that he was calm. An evil laugh was something I told Doug Sloan at the beginning I wouldn't do. And every director who would come on the series, I would tell them I wouldn't do this. So in the interest of trying to be really scary, uh, we did some slightly different things. So I like to think that I brought a little creativity to playing Mezagog. Like obedient dogs, I speak and they come. I could save you some trouble. Good guys always win. I suppose that all depends on who you believe the good guys to be. I did that audition and they asked me to come back for a callback and at the callback, the casting director said, look, we wanna do some, something slightly unusual for this callback. You, you're not gonna have any dialogue, but we want you to act like a dinosaur. And I sort of, I think I remember saying like, you, you mean walk around like a dinosaur or, or am I supposed to make noise? And she said, I'm not sure. We just want you to act like a dinosaur. So this was funny, I actually went home and I think I had to do it the next day and that was where the thing with my cat came in. I was watching him. I saw that he was mad at this other cat and he kind of put his ears back and he kind of went, you know, and I thought that could be it. You know, I thought that could be sort of Mezagog's angle. And of course I spent a, you know, a few minutes walking around like a T-Rex and kind of put my arms up and kind of going like this in the mirror and like looking and thinking, well, that looks dumb. And I didn't really know what to do, but I had a physicality, I think, that I brought into the callback. And I guess they liked that because a few days later I came in to meet with Doug and Doug and I mostly talked about my background. And I think I did the Anton Mercer scene uh, one more time. But um, to answer your question about the days leading up to the audition, it was partially trying to figure out how to be a dinosaur. Do not let him escape with that stone. Go! <laughs> the thing I remember most about Latham is that he always had to have on this giant costume, this like mean looking costume with this helmet and everything. And he never complained. And again, it was always hot, you know, and never complained, nothing out of him, you know, whereas me, I would be taking it off every two seconds, you know, trying to get air. Whenever you are working on something where you have prosthetics or you have any kind of over the top makeup or things like that, you'll often do a camera test. And this was no different with Mezagog. We did a camera test. So the first day that I had the head on and I had the clothes on and everything else, I put it on and we came in and Doug said, you know, let's do a test and we'll go away and we'll look at it. But at that time I stopped him because I had just put it on. I literally had just put it on. I hadn't even looked in the mirror and they rushed me over there. I said, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love just 20 minutes or something to go away. And then let me come back and let's do the camera test. And that was actually quite big. And again, this is one of the reasons I loved working with Doug Sloan so much. He was very creative. He was a producer, but his eye was always on the quality of it and not necessarily maybe some other producers less creative than that. So he let me go away. And when I went away, I think is when the voice happened largely because I, even though I didn't intend the voice to be recorded that day, I wanted the voice and we needed the voice as a placeholder in any case. The new Dinozord has the Rangers on the ropes. Send one of our mutations down to finish the job. I think you, you get it on, you get in the mirror and you start to move and you start to talk. And I realized that he talked like this, Mezagog. Next time you come in here, you better have a dead body with you or you'll be next. So I think I was doing that sort of thing in the mirror and I thought, well, this will work as a placeholder. But as it turned out, it was really right. And uh, I think the helmet, the head to a certain extent amplified the voice a little bit. So we got lucky and it was one of those things you got lucky on the first day where it kind of the voice was right and kind of started doing it. And I was able to keep doing that voice. And um, that's really where it came from. So um, yeah, I still bust it out when I get asked. Teenagers are like mice. They can be easily trapped. However, you must first know where to place the bait. For the record, we actually did absolutely nothing to the voice. The voice was recorded live on set when we would do the takes. And then that was used on the show. One of my favorite scenes, and certainly the most difficult scene, would have been the series of 
shots and scenes that showed Anton Mercer becoming Mezogog. So in a little bit, a kind of a traditional Jekyll and Hyde set up Anton Mercer's working in the lab late one night. He drinks something he shouldn't probably drink. And that sequence is a little bit terrifying. It's quite scary. You know, when I've watched it back, it's quite scary. So he physically is in a lot of pain. He starts to roll around. His face slowly starts to turn into Mezogog. So there's a transformation that happens that we had to film that was difficult and came out, I think, I was quite proud of how it came out because it was really truly scary. One of the elements to it, uh, Paul Grinder was the, the director on this one, where they strapped a 16 millimeter camera to my chest and um, did a shot that you'll see in movies sometimes where the, the thing is kind of right here on you and as you move, it, it captures every single thing you're doing and the effect is one of kind of a nightmare and uh, they put all this slime in my mouth that I'd never had before and I'm opening it and the slime's coming out and I'm passing out and turning into and convulsing and uh, that was the hardest filming day by far but one of my favorite scenes in the sense that it has the right kind of scariness to it to show what it may be like to turn into Mezagog for the first time. Sir, although storing the artifact and the carbon energy formation has helped, it hasn't completely released itself. What are you telling me, Elsa? We need more time. Elsa's basically his sidekick. She's just always there to do everything he says. Miriam is a, you know, a Kiwi actress who's been around for a long time. I knew Miriam a little bit before and um, certainly I've seen her a lot since then. She's great, she's a real pro. She's somebody I'll never forget. She was like a mother figure, actually. Cause you know, I, I moved out there pretty young. So she was always somebody I would turn to for advice and always the greatest advice. Principal Randall, I'd just like to mention the fact that there's absolutely no hard evidence linking me to that unfortunate sprinkler incident. Say it for Judge Judy, Mr. James. Maybe my favorite moment from filming of the entire season could have been one of these things that is on film somewhere, but I don't think has ever been seen. What it is is at the end of the season, Kira, Emma Lahana's character, does a music video. Uh, Doug and the directors in the production are on this day when I'm getting ready to film some Mezagog scenes, doing this fairly elaborate music video for Emma, doing this original song. It's a great song. They're shooting a kind of a traditional music video. She's on a spinning stage, you know, and there's a fan, and, and I'm in my Mezagog gear kind of waiting to do my scene, as you do. We're waiting for this to be done. Now, Doug was sitting there and he's watching and I'm watching and I turned to Doug in the middle of this and I said, wouldn't that be funny if Mezagog just kind of showed up in Kira's video, would that be cool? Doug just loved it, Doug flipped. He said, look, get the head on, let's get Mezagog going. Let me stop here for a second. Let me give you the lyrics. They gave me a sheet of lyrics with the chorus from this song on there, which I can't remember what it's called now. So anyway, for five minutes, I just quickly studied the lyrics, got the Mezagog gear on. Next thing I know, I'm on a spinning you know, wheel with the fan kind of doing, dancing to the music and mouthing these lyrics to Kira's song and spinning around. The crew's like containing themselves and trying not to laugh out loud and we're filming it. I nailed the whole chorus and we stopped and everyone just was rolling on the floor laughing. You know, and Doug said that's the funniest footage all year that no one will ever see. So I've never seen it. I'm not sure who has seen it, but it's in some, you know, probably some vault somewhere, but uh, would love to bust that out someday because Mezaga got down on that music video and, uh, you know, he had skills, so. That was one of my favorite moments uh, from the season. Fly, my warriors. Victory is near. If I know Kruger, he will send his best and brightest to stop the attack, leaving Earth completely defenseless. One of the genius things I think that Greg uh, and Bruce, the producers of the show, did with our season was they invented their own villain from scratch. When Bruce and I were analyzing the footage from Japan, the biggest thing we noticed was that there was not a really powerful overall villain. It wasn't a nemesis. We had our group of heroes and we had the monster or robot of the week, but we didn't have someone with a master plan. And I think within the different versions of Power Rangers, there's different characters. You know, each season there's a villain after a different thing. And sometimes there's just villains that their whole job is to just make monsters to fight Power Rangers. But I was like, that's, that's not gonna fly. Like we need a deep story that really makes these guys need to rise to the occasion. And that's when we developed Grum. Emperor Grum was a very bad baddie, I guess. They call them baddies in New Zealand where we filmed, which was, they always short form everything. I thought that was pretty cute. But he always sent his crybots. They're always stirring up trouble for us. I sent you to Earth 
to get the proton accelerator. You returned with nothing. Therefore, you shall be nothing. Grum was one of those few instances where we worked backwards. I kind of went right to the design phase before we had a strong storyline or character. I just knew I was trying to create like the ultimate Power Rangers villain. I wanted something that would fit into the existing canon. And if you lined them up with other people, it wouldn't look completely out of place. But I also wanted to put that extra little something so it wasn't just a pullover mask. I also was trying to emulate some of my favorite villains growing up, which happened to be uh, cartoon characters from the company we were working with. And uh, a little of that got shut down because they were like, whoa, that's weird that you have, you know, I had this particular set of horns that belong to a witch and a dragon from a famous cartoon about a sleeping princess and they chopped those off uh so then we went to these blade horns and then we decided to cut one off and make that not only a notable visual character thing but part of the story that would kind of culminate at the end of the series and i'm just super into brains i think you know the human brain is just the craziest looking like it's it's the original computer and nothing else is like it so i was like I love any time I can show a brain. And I was like, if <laughs> Grum has so much on his mind, he's like so overwhelmed with like his evil thoughts. Like how cool would it be if we can actually look into his mind, you know? I'm making all that up right now. I just, I'm like, I'm just putting a brain and I don't know why I did it. But I, I then decided we would connect that later because we wanted an even bigger villain to like kind of play kind of like the Vader Emperor thing, which ended up becoming a huge brain. So maybe, I don't know, maybe Omni actually like, gave Grum a lobotomy, and that's why he is the way he is. I, uh, that We'll leave that up for discussion. Let me finish our battle now, once and for all. No! Your obsession with Kruger means nothing to me. Completing my magnificence is all that matters. But great Omni! Silence! And then I made him like the skull mask, and the idea behind that was a little more practical than design. I wanted to be able to do a makeup appliance, the big concern from the company was time. They were just like, you know, again, you're writing, you're directing, now you're gonna apply makeup every morning? Like, you're gonna get up at four o'clock and apply makeup? And I'm like, well, that'll be hard because I was already up till 3.30 sculpting other characters for next week's show. So I was like, what if I do like a half makeup, you know? So he is prosthetic from the cheekbones down and then has a mask that goes on. It looks cool and it kind of lessen the time. I think in the end we were getting his makeup on in about 30 minutes. I have felt it. It can mean only one thing. The evil has awakened from its slumber. I will send one of my minions to find it for me. Yes, an army with the stone at its side would be most powerful. I will use it to destroy the power rangers. And crush anything that gets in my way. Ah! And then, you know, of course, just working with Ren, the actor, the sweetest guy you could ever meet. Just a massive, hulking man, but like so gentle. He has kids, he has kids on set. And, but man, when he got villainous, it was, it was evil. He really made that character scary. He was scary to me, and I know he's still scary because I've just started to watch the show with my four and a half year old daughter, and she's terrified. She's terrified of him, and I think that's really important. You need to feel the villain is treacherous enough that you need saving from. And I think that Broodwing, who is voiced by Jim, was a great henchman to Grum, but I don't think scary enough to the kind of kids watching today where they would buy that he could really kind of terrify an entire Earth and really need the Power Rangers to step in. What Greg and Bruce did in creating Grum was physically made someone terrifying looking, and the idea of him was also kind of like you buy that this guy has a vendetta against our commander, which makes a rich storyline, but also you kind of buy that like, I don't want to mess with that guy. And I think that was something very cool that they did. Those three are more powerful than we thought. They don't know the meaning of power, but soon they will when I unleash my fury. Whoa. 
Well, we got two really good villains in our season. Yeah, I thought Bede and Holly were both awesome. I really liked Jared's journey. He was like, you know, the he was a bit of a rebel at school. You know, he had a bit of bad in him. But I liked how Casey saw the good in him always. The whole time he was trying to fight, you know, to fight the Daishi out. That's how I felt. Like, he was, you know, the Daishi took over him, the evil spirit. I thought the whole idea of Daishi was done really well. Even when they weren't on screen, the way that we talked about him and the way we built him up, I thought the writers did a really good job with that. The Daishi was pretty bad and he was played by Bede Skinner and he had to wear these tight leather pants and I tell you, we thought that the stunties had a bad job having to have those foam things. At least they breathed. I don't think this leather breathed at all. So yeah, that guy, um, he did a very good job, I think. <laughs> And Holly, as a sidekick, I thought was just phenomenal and embodied that character and really nailed him. Camille was also a little bit of a, like, a chameleon. She also became good. They all sort of came good in the end, didn't they, really? The villain in RPM was kind of different because he was a computer virus. It started three years ago. The World Internet Federation reported the appearance of an aggressive new computer worm, Vengex virus. A year later, it was estimated that Vengex had already infected 37% of the world's computer systems. By then, it was too late. Vengex took control of the world's communication, power, and defense systems. It built armies of advanced robotic soldiers that laid waste to everything in their path. There was no stopping them, and Vengex declared victory. I am Vengex. Your world is now my world, and your time is now over. Vengex was much like Zordon in that he's really just a talking voice that for the majority of the time that you ever hear him on set, like the actual filming of it, it's just one of the ADs kind of just reading the off lines. So you really do have to use your imagination in that. I have been working on this next machine design for some time. Call it a pet project. Generals, I'd like to introduce you to Tanaya 7. You see, this time I have created something that looks truly frightening, truly terrible, something that looks human. We were very fortunate with uh, Tanaya 7 at Adelaide, um, who brought this very sassy kind of energy to the whole thing where we can all get together and have a reason and have a purpose and have a good arc in our story if we have something that we're up against and challenging. And especially when it was such a complicated storyline between her and Daniel's character, Dylan, to just be able to have this interesting tension and a relationship kind of conflict in there that we could work with. Centuries ago in Japan, Nylock monsters invaded our world, but samurai warriors defeated them with power symbols passed down from parent to child. Today, the evil Nylock have risen once again and plan to flood the earth. Luckily, a new generation of heroes stand in their way. They are the Power Rangers Samurai. On our show, we had the villain Master Xandred, and for generations, he's been trying to basically flood the world with the Sanzu River, where he's from. I actually kind of preferred Deckard, Rick's portrayal, more than Xandred, because Xandred was never there. We never really got to, like, duke it out with him. I mean, except for the final episodes. But yeah, you need that villain. I mean, otherwise, it's just kind of teenagers running around in brightly colored spandex going, woo! You know, it's like, you, you need that conflict to make it real. There's days where I've seen scenes or I've seen them shooting certain stuff and it was just really creepy, really scary. And sometimes I thought, oh my gosh, this is too scary for some, some kids to watch this. But, you know, it just makes the show exciting. I've analyzed Earth, Admiral. This is a good planet to invade. But the humans, hmm, I hope they won't pose a problem. Humans are used to the small, harmless insects on their planet. Wait until we land. We have the aliens, and then we have the mutated bugs that have been mutated because of the pollution that we've created as humans. And they actually get together and fight against us to take over Earth. You gotta have somebody that just symbolizes the really terrible things that, you know, monsters and humans can do in life so that these, so the kids can watch it and get an idea and go, you know what, I'm going to get in my spandex and I'm going to kick these guys' butts. That's what I hope. Follow my lead. It's morphin' time. Go, go, Mega Boy! The Power Rangers is funny with the fans. They are all over the place. 
uh, in every occupation, in every corner of the globe, and you'd be surprised how often I get recognized still and by whom I get recognized. You know, there was actually a funny story. I was in New York City recently, and we were, I was going bowling with my wife and, and friends of ours, and uh, we went into this cool bowling alley. There's a real cool guy working at the front who just looks like he doesn't have time for us. Do you have a reservation? And he sort of looks up, and he goes, oh, oh, damn. Oh, it's Anton Mercer. Anton Mercer, holy, I can't believe it's Anton Mercer. At one point when the show was running, my, um, my brother was doing a children's party, he has a camp, and he wanted me to call as Diva Talks to talk to the kids. And so I called, happy birthday, and oh, I'm going to get those Power Rangers. And blah, blah, blah. The kids all started crying. <laughs> it's like, he's like, what did you do? I'm like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> so, then, so then I had to call back as Demetria and say, it's okay. Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> it was, but to have that kind of impact on, on children who then grow up and to be remembered is, is, is exciting. It's, kind of, it's like being a little part of um, cinematic history in a fun sort of way. Probably the best years of my life. The most fun, the glory days. Look at me getting emotional right out of the gate. It's just been a wonderful surprise. I mean, I can't believe it has been 20 years. I can't believe that we are still getting to do things with Power Rangers so many years after our season was finished. I feel like there's something I did right, you know, with my little girl dreams of, of wanting to do something and make an impact. I'm proud to have been a part of it. Um, you know, Mezagog will always live inside me. You know, the creation that Doug Sloan and I came up with together will always be there. And it was great fun, and uh, I'm grateful that I was part of it. I think my favorite times were the friends that I made, the excitement of doing the live action, and I guess in some respects it'll end up being a claim to fame. <laughs> if uh, they ever decided to bring back the Lord Zed character, I would think about doing it. It was a credit to everybody, the writers, the cast, the directors, uh, producers. It was a credit to everybody that they were able to put that thing together and we were able to make it work so well. I got to play Villainous on a hit TV show that everybody knows about. If they haven't seen it, they've certainly heard of it. And I mean, I think it's great. And like I said, I hope that my future kids will think it's cool too. <sighs> The only fan debate that matters at all to Mezagog is who's the best bad guy of all time in Power Rangers history. You know, you have Lord Zed and you have Rita Revolta and you have whatever other early, you know, hack bad guys that you want to throw out there for who's the best one. And uh, like I said, there are some scary early villains and I have uh, mad respect for everyone who was involved with creating those villains, but Mezagog is second to none. Mezagog will take any of those fools on any day Give him a time, give him a place, and he'll be there. This helmet is so detailed. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful display piece. Very awesome. some super fans to just talk Power Ranger stuff and talk Power Morphicon in general. And we got one right here. Introduce yourself, sir. My name is Seamus Kelly. I am from danstokerants.rangercentral.com where we do interviews, you know, we do recaps of the show, everything from Power Rangers, VR Troopers, Beetleborgs, Masked Rider, Mystic Knights, and even wow. Super Sentai. Wow, you cover it all. You yes. The, the gambit. <laughs> well, that's why I, I mean, I particularly like VR Troopers. You can tell with my vest. Yeah. The virtualizer. Nice. Yes. What, what about VR Troopers specifically that you like? Brad Hawkins, yeah. very specifically, his battle cries 
wussa and all that. I can't. My voice is gone. It has been a very long weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not, we, we're not even. We just got started, right? Yeah, it's been. What are you talking about? We're not even. We're not even halfway through now, man. It's ridiculous. Yes, yes. Oh my God. So I have a question for you. Oh have you, boy. Have oh you boy. gone around? Oh boy. Have you gone around to anybody? Seen anybody interesting? Talked to anybody? I I came here last night. Yeah. And checked like it was, which was supposedly the preview night, but yeah. it was still packed. It was like yeah. crazy. Not like today. Like today is just insanity. But uh, no, I just I. Met up with some of the former Rangers I met in the past. You know, I got to talk to like Karen Ashley for a bit, yep. and I'm looking for different people out here and stuff. So it's, it's just good, and it's it's like it's, it's almost like a reunion in a way. Yeah, it's almost like because like, <laughs> it's like you see you know fans that you've seen before, you see cosplayed Rangers, you see former Rangers hanging out the, at the table, seeing the new pictures they got out and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, and of course the big thing this year is that Austin St. John is in the house. Yes, Austin St. John is, and it's so interesting that because for a long time people were like, oh, Austin St. John's never coming back. He's never come back to anything. And right. now he's here. He's got what? a whole line of people. And with the original Zoo Rangers as well. Yeah. From Super Sentai. Yeah. It's crazy. I heard they had an amazing panel yesterday. Oh, yeah. And they had a photo op, too. It was crazy. Crazy. <laughs> and then Judd Chip Lynn is in the house. Yes, yes. Oh, my God. Just, it- the man only shaped like my favorite show of all time. <laughs> it was a little. I saw him. My, my heart was quickening. Yeah, I was yeah. like, ah. <laughs> so that was really exciting. I was, I was. It's been great. It's been a good. It's already been a good weekend so far, and it's just getting started. So okay. it's really nice. Really nice. Whoa. Is this your? How many Morphicons have you been to? This is I'm my second. Not your first one. This is, this you, is you, my you, second one. This your is my second, second one. one. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Did well, you go to the last one or? Well, the interesting thing was, uh-huh. I lived in Maryland two years ago, and oh. I had to fly here to get here. Okay. Now I live in LA, so I just took a like, twenty-minute drive, <laughs> and I'm like, I prefer <laughs> this. I prefer this quite a lot. Bit of a difference, huh? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, So you're out here in LA now? Yes, indeed. It's fantastic. Awesome, awesome. What brought you out here? Just the, uh, the, the film Power industry. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I, I, I moved here and I'm like, I'm going to be this close to Power Morphicon. Do you have any idea how much time I'm going to save on flight costs? That's it. I can then put it all to autographs I'm a and li- pictures <laughs> yes. and toys and fill up my room. I don't need to move through my room. Perfect. I just need to be like filled with toys. Yeah. And then, and then I bring, you know, you know, maybe somebody I'm dating <laughs> over and I'm like, look at all this. And then they never come back, and I'm really not sure why. What? That, that, that never happens. Come on. That would never happen. You do not that go, would never happen. You go in and be like, this is my Power Ranger collection, baby. What's up? It was, it was actually interesting yeah. that I was talking to one of the guys, the, the, the CS Toy guys over there. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know, I was once dating a girl, and she's like, you know, pow- you know pirates, they're really cute, you know? So I got, like, the whole, like, you know, pirate outfit from the Super Mega Force or whatever. Right, right, right. Got the toys, and I'm like, yeah, isn't this awesome? Like, two months later, we broke up. I don't, I don't really know why that happened. I don't know. You know, maybe maybe one of the Super Mega Force Rangers. Maybe maybe we can make it happen. <laughs> make it happen. Might you talk to Troy or Jake maybe. to see what's going on? What's up? Was, yeah, man. You know, Jake has some problems with the ladies, though. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. He should get a fedora. That guy needs to get a fedora. A fedora. <laughs> That's He's like the key. I'm such a nice guy. I'm such a nice guy, Gia. Why don't you date me? <laughs> there you go. See you see it. Power Morphicon, you get dating dating tips. Uh, yes. Fedoras. Dating tips, yes. Fedoras will get you ladies. And, and that's where the real magic happens. That's <laughs> that's where the real magic happens. Yes. And I had another question for you, sir. Uh-oh. How does it feel that Selwyn Ward must walk down the street and someone it must hear, Selwyn Ward, first black leader of the Power Rangers. I'll have to ask him that. I think it would be awesome, but, you know, depending on how many times he's heard it. <laughs> and he's just like, if I hear that song one more time. No, no, Selwyn Ward's great. Uh, what's really cool about that is that that was, just, that was an idea that I pitched because I met him at Anime Expo yes. before Morphicon, and then we sort of, you know, kept in touch because we knew more Power Morphicon was coming up. And... I, you know, I had no idea he was going to go for this. I was like, here's this crazy idea I have about you being the first black leader of the Power Rangers. And he was all for it, played into it. Him doing the the entire Smith family is yes. probably one of my favorite yes. things ever. Because <laughs> he's, he's like, we were like deliberately trying to do it. Like, you can clearly tell it's Selwyn, but it's it's whatever. So, uh, so yeah. But no, he's such a good sport and such a good guy. And that's yeah. one thing that's so awesome about Morphicon in general is that Everyone here just seems to be so cool, yeah. so laid back, so chill. You can walk up to people at the tables, and it's been great. Is there any? Is there has there been a specific Morphicon or just in general Power Ranger fan moment that just you know you're just like ah mind blown? Oh my god, there's been a lot. We've I'm done, sure there's been multiple ones. Oh yeah. my god, <laughs> I can't even think about this right now. Well, I'll talk about a recent one that I literally just had yesterday. Sure, sure. I was talking to Brad Hawkins, my All favorite, right. as you can tell. Uh, yeah. And I bought on eBay because he used to be a country singer, and he had a wow. cookie tin with his face on it that he would send out to record stations uh-huh. to try to get them to play his music. It's like, hmm, maybe that's why I don't have a career anymore. But I got him to sign it, and it was fantastic. You have a cookie jar with his face? Yes, and I have a shirt with his face. 
and he's looking off in the distance like, where are you, Dad? I love you, Dad. That's hardcore. Yeah, I, I, can't, I cannot compete with this. Yes. <laughs> that is amazing. I collect, and you know, the other thing about uh, PMC that I find really interesting yeah. is that the first Power Morphicon, there's 300 people, like 90 guests. Yeah. That's insane. And now it's grown. There's like maybe like 6,000, 9,000 people here. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah, he's getting close to 10,000 people. It just gets people. bigger it's every year. So what yeah. you need to do is come here. You should also buy Shout Factory DVDs, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> plug. I, I didn't ask it. you to do plug that. Plug it. So VR Troopers, <laughs> buy them Beetleborgs so we yes. can, you know. Yes. Make it happen. <laughs> It'll be great. Get the Super Sentai when it comes out. Yeah, it's I'm coming. excited about that. Because yeah. everyone is going to be there like, you got to watch the original one, man. You got to watch it. I was like, all have right. You, have you not watched the original? Dude, don't even get, oh, <laughs> don't even get no. me started. <laughs> oh, my You're God. not a true fan. If you You're not, not a true if fan. Tr if you didn't bootleg from Japan. <laughs> no, guys, honestly, fans no. out there, yeah. you are a fan if you just watch an episode and you like it. You don't need anything else. Thank you. You don't need anything else. Thank you. You could have just watched. I know there are some fans like, oh, only some fans like the Mighty Morphins. I'm like, guys, 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 if you just like Mighty Morphin, that's fine. If you just like Time Force, that's fine. If you just like Samurai or yeah. Megaforce, that's fine. Well, there's, it's, it's the same as like, you know, people have their favorite doctors. Yeah. You know, people have their favorite seasons of different shows. And that's what's interesting about Power Rangers. Like, it, like most franchises, you have a little consistent, you know, yeah. like, like like Turtles, for example. Like, you know, it's it's got its variations, but it's still, you know, Leonardo, yeah. Donatello, Michelangelo, Raphael. Except for Next Mutation has Venus. Uh, yeah, so, Venus. Uh, Venus. So, uh, Get that Next Mutation DVD, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? And the Power Rangers. Uh, but, you know, but Power Rangers, you have, you know, all throughout the season, there's, like, different groups, different, you know, different powers every season. So you can come in yeah. almost anywhere. Yeah, and that's what's so great and about it's, it. It's interesting about it, yeah. I just think that a little kid who's watching Samurai now in 20 years is going to be at one of these. They're already here. Well, I mean, they're going to be, but they're going to be our age. They're going to be <laughs> They're going to be like, yeah, Samurai, what's up? So what yeah. does that mean? Does that mean we'll be twice our age now? And still, still wearing Morphin, yes. Mighty Morphin? I mean, like, and yeah, that, that, that'll be them. I mean, like, oh, Mighty Morphin. I, everyone oh. knows Samurai's where it's oh, at. Oh, my God, it was so I, great. Come on, guys. What's going on? <laughs> and then when everyone's in the future, hey, you know, Lightning Force. Like, you. Lightning you know, force. <laughs> like, hipster Force. I'm excited for Hipster, hipster force. force. You know, you know, y'all know about that. Techno Fury, you no, these are, these are, I'm dropping new Power Rangers. You ain't heard of before. Who's a fan now? Oh, that's right. You don't know the future. This man really knows. He knows yeah. it. He can see it. Popcorn. <laughs> that's it. It's just Power Rangers popcorn. Yeah, that's what's going to be going on already. There's and there's there's some. It's probably Austin St. John. Yeah, Austin St. John is right down He's here. He's got a long line. It is long amazing. Long line. It is amazing. It is amazing. Well, Seamus, thank you so much for coming thank by you. here, man. This thank was a you. lot of fun. I'm, and so glad to see you here. And we're just having a good time here at Power Morphicon. Yes, seriously. So plug your stuff make sure we we follow you we want to make sure where are you at um me um i'm with the podcast dance toku ranch you can find us at dance toku ranch that's t-o-k-u uh dot rangerscentral.com so you can find all of our podcasts and i also do a web series called 21 jump street rangers that's a thing that wait, needs to exist wait, wait, hold on what 21 jump street rangers tell me about this uh it's a bunch of kids who solve uh problems in in, in high schools and then they also transform and uh go beat the bad guys hollywood are hollywood, you listening right? Make it happen. Jonah Hill, Channing Tatum. Jonah Hill. Already rebooted 21 Jump Street. We're getting a Power Rangers movie in 2016. That Talk can, to this guy. Crossover. That can, that can be like 55 Jump Street. That, where they turn into, I love they turn into Power Rangers. <laughs> I love it. All right, I guys. Well, thanks so much. And keep watching Power Morphicon Live. we got so many more awesome things to show you guys all throughout the day. Check us out, PowerMorphiconLive.com, and tweet us, hashtag PowerMorphiconLive. Are you on the Twitters? Yes, I am at Ryder Jetfire, Ryder like Common Rider, and Jetfire like the Transformer. Ha, oh, yeah! Oh, nice, combo. You're just crossing over everything. It's what I do. You can't <laughs> have just one. You gotta have as many as you can. I like it, I like All right. it. All right, keep watching, PowerMorphiconLive. Right. See ya.
But first, I'll start off with the first important one. You got Because there were no showers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
what? Um, it should, um, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll intro this uh, and then turn it over to Doug. Um, because uh, that was kind of the dot dot dot. We we don't know where that uh, where that could have went. But when I when I auditioned for Power Rangers, I was 18 years old, and I was auditioning for the role of the White Ranger. So um, when I got the role, I was I was on track to be the next Power Ranger to be the White Ranger. And right there at the very last minute, Jason David Frank stayed on the uh, Power Rangers and went from the Green to the White Ranger, and then I got the opportunity to play Ryan Steele on VR Troopers. So um, yeah, hey, there's 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 fate. For you. So, I don't know, where do you think that would have gone? Well, I don't know where it would have gone, but originally the Art Troopers was designed as a one hero show called Cybertron. I don't know if anybody knows that. And, and he played his dad. I played his dad. But <laughs> Jason was supposed to be Cybertron, and then right when this was happening, uh, the Green Ranger thing went crazy. I mean, absolutely nuts. And I think that they were afraid that to sort of rock the apple cart, but they loved Brad, so they wanted something to put Brad in, and so they made your troopers a three person show. And they kept Jason on. But Jason desperately wanted to be Cybertron. He kind of went off his every day. Dude, I want to be I, I, I just went to Jason's uh, went to Jason's house in Houston and we did a con down there and I walk in his garage. He's showing off all his toys. He's got all his nice toys. And the only thing I see is the Cybertron movie poster. Yeah. And I'm like, you're jealous? Thank you. Good question. I have a question for Tanya, Ken, and Rocky. Are you going to be in the final episode of Power Rangers Super Mega Force? No. No. <laughs> yeah. They were filming in New Zealand at that time. It was hard to get out there. So.
I was on VR Troopers and the show was out, because I've always been a kind of person, I always just keep going about my life. I go to grocery stores and movies and go places and do things that I like to do, and I never really think that the rest of the world is watching this show, which, I mean, between Power Rangers and VR Troopers, and we were we were side by side in, uh, in several markets. I went to, uh, I took some friends and we all went to Universal Studios, and we're just walking around having a good time, like, you know, like, like nothing's going on, and this mass of kids just go, there he is! <laughs> and you can see this army running at me, and I'm like, <laughs> and my buddy's like, we need to, we need to, we need to run. <laughs> I had no idea that that was for me, and I was, I was, uh, that was the day it clicked. I was like, this is, this is a huge deal. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. My year experience, honestly, was uh, we went to Mammoth Mountain to shoot a ski episode. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was really, really fun. But we got snowed in for the first three days of shooting, so we couldn't shoot. We had to switch everything inside. Cat was there. It was awesomely brutal, but really, really fun, and it turned out good. That was so fun. I was glad you didn't tell the other story. I would never. Well, well, the other side of that was you saw Catherine, and she had a bit of food in her hand, and she was going, here, doggy, 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 and Doug says, Stop, don't move, that's not a dog. <laughs> it was a wolf. <laughs> Traveling around 
doing shows all over the place because uh, it's so so cool to see you know the fans come out like you guys do. So appreciate that. Yeah.
got some messed up lines and like like little bloopers and everything after the episode. How are you guys able to keep the parts where you mess up lines and curse? They would leave them out because it's still the curse of the kids show. You guys remember that? Like like at the next episode when they when they have like the bloopers during the credits, sometimes you guys can curse it you're like leave the parts out. Yeah. I mean, <laughs>
Family, to be precise. Uh, we're from Light to Be Rescue. Let me let you all introduce yourselves here. I am Allison McInnes. I play Dana Mitchell. Ron Roger, Captain Mitchell, and dad to these two. <laughs> Ryan Mitchell, Rhett Fisher. It's my real name. Titanium <laughs> Ranger. So many different names. It's great. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got your real name. We are the Mitchell name. family. You, yeah, we are the Mitchell family. <laughs> Explosions behind us. See, we'll see you <laughs> that later. We'll add those in. We'll and then we'll be in. running. It'll be perfect. <laughs> Cool, cool. Well, it's good to see all of you here. It's great to see to have the family here. It's like a, it's like a family reunion in a way. It is. It is. In it many really ways. With Once every 15 years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it's like high school all over again. Yeah. It's great. So how has Proud Morphicon been for you guys this year specifically? Busy. It's amazing. It's so different from other cons where you walk through the room and maybe one in a thousand people know who you are. Here, everybody does. It's so strange. Yeah, it is very surreal. I didn't know what to expect. This is my first con. Yeah. And so I went on YouTube and I was like trying to see like what it was all about. And I actually found you. You were like one of the videos that I watched. Oh, wow. <laughs> that got me kind of like, okay, what's going on here? I think you were interviewing uh, Jason David Frank or something. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, wow, this is cool. Okay. I was trying to check out like the background too to see what was what it was all about. But it's been fun. It's been crazy. Yeah, I, I was here the last one. I was the first Lightspeed Rescue cast member to come and there's never been any Rangers from our group until this year. Nice. So the difference is I can't badmouth them all like I did two years ago because <laughs> they're actually here to kick my butt. But you, you paved the way for us, though. I paved Thank the way. You. Yeah, yeah. You, you brought the dad and then brought the children if it afterwards. Wasn't for him, yeah. <laughs> and these two, of course, were from my loins. So that yeah. was, you know. Yes. Let's not mention your loins. <laughs> that must have hurt. Especially you. Yeah. Oh, I bet. So, th so this is the first uh, Power Morphicons for both of you, then. So it's, it, yes. Is this what you expected? I mean, it's, it's obviously, like you said, it's a specifically for Power Rangers. Because I know I saw you at San Diego Comic Con, which was a different experience <laughs> versus this. Never again. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I couldn't even get to the dice booth that I found. The line was just, mm-mm, mm-mm. Wow. Yeah. Well, this is definitely way bigger than I expected. Yeah. For sure. This is way crazier. I thought I'd be chilling in my chair hoping someone would come say hi, you know, just out there alone. Like, please, somebody, let me sign something. And it's just been overwhelming. And for a ranger that was only on half a season, I know. you have like a line around the corner. I got some making up to do. Yeah, yeah. but you got the, the ranger key. You won the key That's contest. True. So you know. They love you. That's true. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. And how does that feel? Yeah, you, did you see the uh, your key there? And, uh, I mean, I feel like I'm it? accepting an Oscar right now. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank uh, the Mitchell family. Uh, I'd like to thank Ron for girthing me from his loins. And I would like to thank again. all the fans for supporting me through the years. Thank you very much. Saban, Disney, <laughs> yeah. Fox family. Yes, Saban, Disney, Fox family, all those. There's so many people to thank. Allison. I don't know why I'm thanking you. I don't, I don't know either. what's happening right now. Cool. Take it away. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I'm just please, loving it. Please get the microphone I, I, away from I know. my son. You he may look good, <laughs> but he doesn't handle Mike really well, okay? Let's just say. No, you guys are great. I want to be adopted. Can I? Can, is there room for another Mitchell? Absolutely. Andre Mitchell. Andre Mitchell. You Mitchell. look just Honoring. like me. He's in. <laughs> All right. The different like strokes Mom. of Power Rangers we got going on you right know, now. We, we really actually could have done a, uh, an exclusive right now if... Iris Hampton, our casting director, was here uh -huh. because Iris Hampton, when she was blonde yeah. on the show 15 years ago and sweet 15 years ago, she looked exactly like Iris. And we always thought that Iris should do an appearance in the last episode as the long lost mother because they look so much alike. Yeah. So she's here somewhere, darn it. But I don't know. I haven't oh. seen her in a while. She may have left. We could have thought we'd throw that in as a little trivia because people don't know that. Yeah, well, yeah. And it almost happened. And my character happened. was named after her daughter. That's awesome. There you go. There you go. So everyone write some fan fiction right now about that, and then maybe they'll implant that into. Maybe <laughs> yes. we'll film it. A yeah. web series, The Mitchell Family. 
That'd be cool. Yeah. Right? We tried. Yeah. We I want to see that. Iris Hampton cosplay. That's my. That's oh, my goal. Yeah. Yes. She already said she'd do it. <laughs> and and we also have a uh, Facebook page. What's it? The Mitchell family. Mitchell Lightspeed. Oh, I always forget. <laughs> Shoot. Something, something like that. Lightspeed Rescue Extravaganza. Yeah. Captain, <laughs> Captain Mitchell of Lightspeed Rescue, uh, Power Ranger Lightspeed, and I think it's the Mitchell family Facebook page, right? I don't know. We can, <laughs> if, if you like us, we can make appearances all over the United States and the world as a family unit. Sounds Very good. Dysfunctional family unit. I like We're this. So With our new child. Not. This could be a thing. Like, you could guys can kind of do, like, a hybrid Power Rangers slash reality show because there's so many, you know, like, the reality shows with the family stuff. You have the Mitchell family and just, like, their regular lives and then when they have to go <laughs> and fight monsters, too. Yeah, so, that would be interesting. I like this. <laughs> yeah, like, we, we need to do we this. We've got some ideas here. We're like, like Archie Bunker there. We are dysfunctional. <laughs> Come home. You think we're, we're, you just saved the world? It's like, yeah, but I, I got an itch I can't scratch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The camera, something. Sorry, having squabbles while you're in the middle of battle, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I hate broccoli. Why'd you serve me broccoli? I saved the world. I come home and you serve me broccoli. Damn it. And you'll sing the theme song? I'll, yeah, I would. Yeah. Oh, are you going to sing for us right now? I mean, I'll wear this helmet the whole time while I'm doing it, so no one will know who I am, but yes. Oh, hey. your next show. You should yeah. totally do that. Aren't you, like, part of this, like, musical band now? Uh, What's that whole thing? Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of rangers out here that are... I mean, I'm meeting a bunch of people that are into music. It's pretty crazy. But, yeah, I'm, I have a band, Project Dirty. Project, Project Dirty. Dirty. Dot Project Dirty, get that. Project Dirty. 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 Yes, yes. There's yeah. actually a concert here tonight. Sweet. Yeah. Not Project Dirty, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, I got a private <laughs> event tonight. Oh, private I would event. invite all the fans tonight, but it's a private event. So. Oh, cool. You can crash it. You can. <laughs> it's at the AT&T Center. Oh. Boom. All right, there you go. Just a bomb. Sneak in. Yeah. <laughs> so this is live, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't control what you fans do. <laughs> careful, just careful. saying. <laughs> so, yeah. Take the law into your own hands. <laughs> Crash the party. Let's see what happens. Might, might get in. Cool. You never know. And then finally, just what, what are your feelings just about the Power Rangers legacy as a whole? I mean, to see an event like this happening or to just know that people are still coming up to you to this day talking about Lightspeed Rescue or just about Power Rangers in general, how does that make you feel to be part of this? this whole legacy it's amazing and actually i can't talk about them in detail but i just met the new cast oh baby baby rangers it's it's baby instantly rangers. yes they're the baby <laughs> rangers instantly part of the family yeah weirdest thing was i'm walking up to them they know who i am cool. they grew up watching our show <laughs> yeah. I know, I know how it feels. But it's, it's, <laughs> it's just one giant family, and just even the new baby rangers, they're instantly part of it. I'm just thinking of like Muppet Babies now, or like little <laughs> yeah. cartoon baby rangers. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, can you tell us any details about. Uh, they are so cute. Yes. They're so cute. That's and what about, uh, what about you? You also had some, some ranger time recently. Can you? Dun, so I was like, dun, what kind dun. of ranger time are you talking about? <laughs> whoa, 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 I don't know. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, you know, we got the. Uh, which one of the rangers is she dating now? <laughs> <laughs> no oh, comment. Oh, no comment. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All the secrets are revealed. <laughs> no, I was, I was, I was. More Legendary war. Yeah, I was more. We're gonna have a contest war. to see how many rangers my daughter has dated. And this is, we're going to put the entry forms in on Facebook. Uh, inappropriate. <laughs> Moving on. It's a legendary war. Yeah. <laughs> this legendary is trivia war. that you should put yeah. in the new trivia. We were in New Zealand. <laughs> we were in New Zealand, and it was really fun. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I'm just yeah. kidding. It's only been a dozen. I mean, <laughs> I'm kidding. It's called comedy with a capital K. So uh, on that team, I'm telling you, dysfunctional family, we got a sitcom going here. Yeah. So uh, thank you guys so much for coming over here. This was so much fun. And we're going to just keep things going here at Power Morphicon Live. Got some more cool stuff to show you guys. Let's just keep it rolling. This helmet is so detailed. It's gorgeous. A beautiful display piece. Very awesome. It's morphin' time! Ready! Overdrive, accelerate! RPM! 
get it here. Ha! Hey, I'm Bruno. I live in California, and I'm a huge Power Rangers toy collector. My name is Nicholas Andrews. I live in Japan, and this is some of my Power Rangers collection. Hi, my name is Cody Logan. I am obviously a Power Ranger toy collector, and I'm from Virginia. Hello, my name is Jamie. I'm from the UK. Germo, I am from San Jose, Costa Rica. I am a Power Rangers fan. My name is Roberto. I live in Brazil and I'll show you my Power Rangers collection. I'm Leon Martinez. I'm from Ecuador, South America. Hello, my name is Brian Dagley, otherwise known as Shuku and Shinobi, Power Rangers fan and toy reviewer. I've been collecting Power Ranger toys since I was a wee lad back in MMPR when it first started back in 1993, and uh, I collected up through Power Rangers Lost Galaxy, then fell out of the franchise for a little bit, and then when uh, Power Rangers SPD aired, I started getting back into it, and then once Mystic Forces toy line started, I started collecting a lot heavier. Uh, as you can see over here, the uh, Samurai line is kind of where things picked up to really crazy levels. And now with the introduction of power cards and the action card game, with all the Mega Force products, uh, the buying just got out of hand. My name is Dynasty Wells Union from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm a huge nerd and big time toy collector and Power Rangers is one of my all time favorites. I was brought in as an adult fan. 2006 is when I first started collecting toys. Mystic Morpher right here is my very first Morpher. And Mystic Titan, love this guy. My very, very first Megazord. Japanese imported figures. By the way, first female Red Ranger. Whoop whoop. And don't, don't count Charlie from SPD. She was evil, she doesn't count. This is my baby right here. Ranger Key Wall. After seven years of collecting, I've done pretty well for myself. Hi, my name's Cody Blythe, and I've been a Power Ranger fan and a collector for 20 years. Uh, as you can see, I've got some Megazords back here. Um, and the biggest piece in my collection, or none of the toys actually, it's more of a sentimental piece. And um, I recently just got a hold of one of the people, which is Rhett Fisher. These two autographs right here are my main um, my favorites right here. I think those autographs are like my favorite piece of my collection. Titanium power! My name is Dave. I've been a Power Ranger fan for 20 years. I have probably over 40 Megazords. I have a collection of weapons and of Morphers as well. I became a Power Ranger fan when I was 16, when I first saw Tommy, the Green Ranger on the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and he was the bad guy, so it was a five-part series. And from there, I just uh, just took off, and I'm a huge dinosaur fan, so that also helped having the dinosaur megazords. Uh, I was interviewed by the reporter of the newspaper. They asked me some questions about the, what the series meant to me and what I got from the series as a kid. Here you can see my Power Rangers collection, Power Ranger comics made by Marvel and Hamilton Comics. Hi, I'm Jake. I'm a huge Power Ranger collector. Been collecting for, been collecting ever since I was a kid, basically. So here's my collection, and it's more of a time. Start over here at the Wall O Zio. this. Originally Alter Zord was supposed to be called Colosso. Thought that was pretty cool. This is a ad from Toy Fair in 1993 before the show even came out. Hello, my name is Eric Berry, also known as b 47 and I am a Power Rangers collector. What got me into collecting at a very early age was actually my dad. He is a huge toy collector. Like you name it, he collects it. So 
when Power Rangers came about, it was a no-brainer. You know, I had to have the toys. My collection has also extended to doing toy reviews, and I think that's my way to give back to other fans, letting them know what is really amazing out there and something that they should invest their money in. Somehow I managed to not get into Power Rangers during season one, but when I saw the Red Dragon Thunderzord, that was kind of it. I started watching the show just for the Red Dragon Thunderzord. I thought that was the most amazing thing ever. So I had to have the toy. And then if you're gonna have Red Dragon Thunderzord, you might as well get the Assault Team, right? And then you're gonna need Tiger Zord. and how can you have that and then not get Tor the Shuttle Zord? If you're going to have all the season two toys, why not have season one? And if you're gonna have one and two, why not get three? I think the fact that the show is live action also really helped sell me the toys, because they were using the models on the show. And I love props, I love miniatures, model trains, stuff like that. So the fact that you could recreate your own Megazord battles using the toys, that really made me want them even more. In season two, when the Rangers call their Zords and the Dinosaurs transform into the Thunder Zords, those are the American toys you're seeing which were slightly altered, but still. And then of course, season three is very recognizable with the pink Shogun arm and the Powerbolt stickers. So, gotta have Titanus. My name is Jesse Elias. I've been a fan of the Power Rangers franchise since I was three years old. I was hooked on the toys. I still remember one bit where I had to rent the same VHS tape of Day of the Dumpster five or 10 times because the thing kept on burning out. <laughs> there wasn't a show like it back when it aired. I mean, you had things like uh, Godzilla, but outside of that, there wasn't a team of superheroes in a live-action setting that quite had the same charm that Mighty Morphin Power Rangers had. And that's something that really caught me as a kid. I liked superheroes, I liked robots. This combined both of them into something that I really enjoyed. And it just kind of stuck with me. To this day, I still like robots and I still like superheroes. So there really uh, is nothing that I can't love about Power Rangers. Power Rangers kind of clicked with me in a lot of ways. And it helped a lot of people with disabilities. Like, in one episode, they helped the, they helped the person who was blind. It teaches a lot of good things to both kids and adults. How to work as a team, how to be accepting of others, even beyond the cultural barriers. Like, I remember this one episode of MNPR where they introduced something to kids that most people don't know, which is deaf culture. One person I think was hard of hearing. I have a disability myself, and it really kind of clicked with me in a lot of ways. It was really kind of cool. So I like collecting things. I got a lot of different memorabilia, and I have to say that having Power Rangers still be as strong 20 years later is you get to see a lot of cool collectibles out there. You get to see people bringing back old toys, there being reissues of toys. I went to some place and was able to get this Power Ranger that talks, and he doesn't even speak English. That's what I'm talking about. A lot of people ask me on YouTube, what is my favorite Power Rangers toy? After 20 years, that's a really hard question. I've got so many that it's really hard to pick a favorite piece, but if I had to go with anything, I would probably pick the SWAT Megazord from Power Rangers SPD, just because it's really cool. I love the black base for the color scheme. The SWAT flyers all look really cool, and I mean, he's got lights, he's got sounds. He's the whole package in a nice, tiny little combat form. Plus, he's got a gun mode, and that's really cool. I actually have a lot of favorites, but for different reasons. Like, Isis Megazord, I think, is just so pretty. Same with Thunder Megazord. Then there's Q-Rex from Time Force, which has a remote control, and it can walk, it transforms, shoots lasers, fires missiles. Manticore Megazord may not be my favorite, but the fact that Mystic Lion can walk over to Mystic Firebird and they transform together, I think is just the coolest thing ever. I could probably pick at least one Megazord from every season and tell you why that one is my favorite. I guess one part of collecting is going after really rare stuff, whether it's Ranger Keys, Legacy Morpher. Wild Force Animus Megazord, very cool and Probably the rarest piece in my collection. Uh, from Power Rangers RPM, Orange and Sentai Go Launcher, the black and white Gombro, the Valve Max Megazord in Power Rangers RPM. It was an exclusive release in Japan, and so it's kind of rare and a little bit pricey nowadays. I've got this beautiful chrome Predazord, and at the last Power Morphicon, I found this black and gold Galaxy Megazord. Like, the oldest piece in my collection and the crown jewel right now would have to be my Thunder Megazord from MMPR Season 2. I would say that this is my rarest item. This is a Disney Racers Red Power Ranger car. 
the Disney Racers line was only sold at Disney theme parks, which I worked at, obviously, during the time that Disney had the Power Rangers license. They uh, made a little red SPD car here, but they only described it as Red Power Ranger. I've looked around online, and I haven't even really been able to find the Disney Racers, to be quite honest. So, I would definitely call this the rarest piece of my collection. One rare item that I do have would have to be my Screen U Zeo belt from Power Rangers Zeo that I got back in 2007 at Power Morphicon 1. Another piece would have to be my Zeo Megazord. It's complete, and I actually got that at Robo Toy Fest. And then my Time Force Megazord and my um, Warrior Wheel. Same place, Robo Toy Fest. I would say that the Legacy Power Morpher is my overall favorite Power Rangers toy, just because of the nostalgia that it brings when I take a look at it. It's pretty sweet having this finally, and in die-cast metal and the lights and sounds and everything, I think it's really cool to have that now as an adult and a collector. I just wanted to show off a few parts of my collection, some Mighty Morphin toys, some costumes, and a screen-used Hatchasaurus monster costume. Hello, my name is Matthew Wilson. I've been collecting for about 20 years now. I'm from the United Kingdom. I collect Power Ranger toys, Power Ranger props, pretty much everything from Power Rangers. Let's take a look at some of my props and my collection. These are probably the rarest piece of my collection. These are the tour movie costumes, which are really hard, almost impossible to come by. Prop helmets from Power Rangers the movie. Power Rangers the movie signed poster. Oozman head used in the movie when the red and black ranger kick his head. Power Rangers the movie Tango Warrior mask and his feet. These are quite rare. These are the die cast Drew Ranger metal figures. Here are some rare props, Ritoro's feet, gold arm mask, putty stuff, carp mask. This was a screen used Saba, um, more than likely used in the episode White Light where Tommy became the White Ranger. You can see the chips, somebody painstakingly uh, glued these back on to try and make it as much presentable as possible. Here we have uh, Lord Zed's Growth Grenade. Uh, this is actually the Japanese version and this is the only one that was shipped to the America. And speaking to the prop master of the show, this was the only one and actually lights up too. You guys all remember the Firebird Thunderzord from season two, and this little thingy here that also attached to the Megazord's staff. The Firebird Thunderzord's tail and staff. Fiberglass. So this you could actually smack somebody with and it would yeah. hurt. Yeah, <laughs> but it's very detailed. You wanna demonstrate that? No, Edgar. This will hurt better than that. I'll be big, I can step on you. Ha! I'm William Miyamoto and I'm from Los Angeles, California. I'm a huge Power Ranger fan. I've been a fan since 1993 and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Being a fan, I also love collecting the toys, especially the deluxe Megazords. I'm a new Power Ranger fan. I was never into it until earlier this year when my husband started watching the seasons with my daughter, and then I was hooked. Hi, my name is Zoe Miyamoto. I love Power Rangers. This is all my toys that I took from Daddy. I've been a fan of Power Rangers ever since Mighty Morphing. Power Rangers will inspire me to join karate, where I've participated in various national and international tournaments. But what really got me hooked onto the series were the Megazords. I loved how different animals, dinosaurs, vehicles could all transform into one huge fighting machine. And that's what got me hooked on my collection. I've been collecting toys since the very beginning from 1993, so it's been 20 years of collecting these Power Rangers toys. I've grown up with the show from the very beginning. I watched the show when I was three and a half years old. That's when the show premiered. And I'm now 23 years old and I'm still collecting the toys. Over the past 20 years, I've collected all these different Power Rangers. I've collected different vehicles and cycles. On this table, I have a lot of the different weapons and roleplay items. This is my shelf of Megazords. So I have my whole little Megazord collection from the, over the years. If I had to pick a favorite roleplay item, I would say it would be the Mega Blade just because of how awesome it is and it's a pretty decent size as well. I would say the Super Samurai Final Victory Pack is my favorite of the Power Rangers, just because of how rare it is and the metallic paint and everything is really cool. It's been a fun time the last 20 years collecting this, and I do look forward to the next 20 years. It's gonna be exciting. I've been collecting for about 20 years, and you know, here's hoping for another 20. Overall, the Power Rangers toy line is a toy line like no other, and it has a lot to do with the fans. If I hadn't start collecting these, I'm really not sure where I would be. I met so many 
brilliant, amazing people throughout this fandom and throughout collecting these toys and throughout my toy reviewing career so far. There isn't a toy that I don't pick up that I don't like in some way or another. And overall, it's just got everything that I'm looking for. Superheroes, robots, fun, collectability, gimmicks. It's got it all, and it can pretty much cover anything you're looking for. everybody welcome to power morphicon live we are still going strong and i got some more awesome fans for you here at the booth introduce yourselves hi there i am jake brody aka database ranger it's and i'm marissa gallego and uh I'm cosplaying dr k right now yes very nice man. and you gotta check out this jacket right now this is oh, an awesome yes. power rangers in yes. space jacket look at that with the signature from yeah. mr uh Chip Lynn, Judd Lynn. Nice, nice. You had that signed, what, three years ago? Four years ago. Four wow. years ago. We've, we, I've, I've been at every Power Morphicon. Uh, Marissa has accompanied me at all, all but the last one. Yes, I missed was, the last one. There was a wedding of, of friends. <laughs> I had to go to a wedding. So you've seen, so you've been to all of them? You've, mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, nice, nice. Yeah, I, I, I was fortunately living out here for the summer, the, the first one, I just, and have flown out for everyone since because I love being here. Cool. Yes, from the West Coast. We're from New York. Well, yeah, oh, we're wow. from the East Coast. No, East Coast. Yeah, <laughs> the East Coast. <laughs> right, right, of course. Coast, hey, yeah. No, no, New York right. is over here. Yeah, we yeah. moved it. We moved it. We brought yeah. it over. They were tired of the oh, winter. Okay. We decided to move it over here. Oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> Certainly save us on airfare. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you just uh, come straight down. Yeah. So cool. Get rid of that humidity. So then what do you feel about Power Morphic? Since you've seen it since its beginnings, yeah. how do you feel about it now for, compared to when it first started? It's, it's interesting because it... It simultaneously is getting bigger every year, mm -hmm. but for me it almost feels smaller every year because I'm getting to know all the people. Like, all of a sudden it's like, oh hey, there's all these ranger actors, which the first year it's like, oh my god, these people who I've never <laughs> seen before. And now it's almost becoming like, oh hey man, it's good to see you again. Hey, good to see you. Oh, I'm so glad you could come down. And it's, it's becoming such a camaraderie between the fans and the cast and crew of the show that the event is getting bigger, the world is getting smaller. It's yeah. great. You feel like that, because you don't see that sometimes, you know, you're seeing it more and more now, especially with the internet, but yeah. you think it's interesting how the Power Rangers, the show, and the fans are just kind of almost becoming one, almost kind of very congruent? Oh, it's great. Yeah. It's great that we can combine like that. Um, I mean, in some ways, that's what the Power Force is about. Yes, uh, I am a member of the Power Force as well, so... Yes. Unites. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boom. Boom. <laughs> there we go. Explosion. Nice, nice. Well, I'm so glad you guys came by. And, Thank and you very much. tell us again where they can see you online. Oh, yes. You guys can see us online. We do a web series called Database Rangers Power Reviews. Uh, it's an exciting comedic review series starring Database Ranger and Dr. K. We look at Power Rangers episodes, both new and old, with a comedic bent, all while crafting a very complex, overarching story that oh. uh, yes, has been developed. Yes, we have a story developing. of our own. It's nice. been developing over the past two over the past two years of how this strange Power Rangers nerd just happens to have Dr. K living in his uh, in his apartment. <laughs> the answer may surprise you. Oh, <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right. Well, be sure to check that out, and be sure to keep checking out Power Morphicon Live as we bring all the fun of Power Morphicon to you. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Still having fun here at Power Morphicon Live, and I have yet another <laughs> special guest with me. Please introduce yourself, sir. How you doing? I'm uh, good to meet you. Good I'm to meet Sean you. C.W. Johnson. I played Carter Grayson on Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue. Nice, nice. So how are you feeling? Is he having a good time here at Power hey, Morphicon? Hey, I got to tell you, it's amazing. This is my first uh, first convention, first Power Morphicon, and being able to get out and just 
meet all the fans has been uh, it's been a trip. It's been mind blowing. Is this your first convention? Period. 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 Yeah. yeah. What? Yep. Well, this is the I'm best one for you to start I, I off with. It's, it's, it's been amazing. They've been in, been really good to us, and uh, it's again just been awesome being able to meet everybody. Yeah. So how did this come about? How did you end up deciding that you wanted to do conventions for the first part, and then to come specifically here to Power Morphicon? You know, I was gonna say it's a great question. To be honest, uh, you know, I'd heard so much about the last uh, the last Power Morphicon, and then since then, especially after going back for Super Mega Force in uh, New Zealand last year, you know, a lot of the uh, the cast members were kind of talking about it and saying how great it was to, to reach out and be able to connect with some of the fans. And so just talking to them and everything, they kind of convinced me that it would be, be a great opportunity to, to come out, and I'm glad I did. And, and, and how's it to see that, you know, Power Rangers still has this long legacy going on and fans and Man, people still into it? It, it is incredible. It's, it's reached pop culture status as if it didn't have it before. But, it's you know, when I was on the season, um, you know, that was about 14 years ago. Yeah. At the time, it was still relatively new, uh, at least in the States. I mean, you know, we were a number of seasons in, but at this point in time, 20 years, it just blows my mind that it's still going as strong as it is and has had the life. And, um, you know, hey, maybe there'll be another 20. It'd be great. Maybe, maybe. Now, can you tell us about a little, little what happened in New Zealand? You said you were out there. You know, I can tell you that I went. I can tell you that there are a lot of rangers. Uh-huh. Um, I can tell you there are some special effects. Yeah. And uh, that's probably about as far as I can go on that. That's a good, that's a good number of things. That's a good number of There's generic a things. There's going to be more than one morph. I'll say that much. Okay. Of we just Super Mega Force. Anyone I else going to be morphing? I just can't even... Uh, there might be some photo leaks out there somewhere. I okay. Don't know. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Cool. Uh, what else have you got going on? What other projects you got? You know, just keeping busy. Keeping nice. busy. Lots of things, hands and lots of stuff. So. Will we see you back here for the next Power Morphicon? We'll you think? see. I hope so. Oh, I love it's that. been a good time. It's been good. It's been good. What have you done here? Have you done, like, I'm guessing there was probably a light speed rescue yeah, panel? Yeah, we had a light speed panel yesterday. Uh, I was going to say coming up in uh, a little less than two hours. I guess we got a Forever Red panel, which nice. would be pretty cool, getting, yes. the, uh, getting the band back together. And then, uh, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, we've got a light speed and uh, Lost Galaxy panel tomorrow. So looking forward to that as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming out Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Meeting all your fans. And glad that this was your first. I mean, this is going to set the bar high for you Yeah. for, for all kinds to come. Nothing's going to compare. This, but I say it doesn't get much bigger than this. <laughs> yeah, <for Power> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Thank you. Appreciate Pleasure your time. to talk to you. Absolutely. And keep watching Power Morphicon live. props any sci-fi show there's going to be propage it's all unique it's something you've never seen before oh, the props are insane like insanely cool though not insane like oh the props on power rangers were really cool it helps explain the whole universe for an audience and it also helps explain the whole universe for an actor or a character the reality of course is it's a plastic toy but when you hold it to me it wasn't a plastic toy like this was a power ranger gun <laughs> Anything uh, the actor holds is a prop. Uh, you know, if, uh, if Billy comes into the command center and he's got a device, I have to have that device for him. If he has a, a watch, a communicator, anything like that is, is a prop. Normally, uh, when I work on the bigger shows, we have companies build the props, but we didn't have that luxury. So when they needed a device to destroy the world, so on this show, which made it exciting and ridiculous, was I had to run out and come up with a device that destroys the world for the next episode. But luckily on Power Rangers, a slinky with a flashlight attached to it, spray painted green, could destroy the world. <laughs> Sometimes we would just write a device, a weapon, and he would just come up with something crazy and unique looking that we'd say, perfect, great, let's shoot it. It was great because in the early days, I'd go to the swap meet or garage sales to find pieces to glue together with a hot glue gun. And then the episode would play. And then a month later, I'd be at that same swap meet and there'd be posters of the Power Rangers holding that device that I had bought at that swap meet. I mean, it was like a, a shower clock with, you know, with a, a G.I. Joe piece on screwed to it. Well, and you know what's funny about that is I, I talked to kids as they got older and they would go into the garage and take their toys and break them and make Billy props and spray paint it blue. We would have these constant show and tells we called them where the prop guy would 
you'd go to his prop uh, department and he would show you, here's the zapper for this episode and here's the morpher and here's the ninja whatever. He had everything laid out. And we were just looking at the morphers and our badges and the phasers. For me, being such a huge fan and growing up in the martial arts, I was just jaw dropping, eyes open. I was like, oh my gosh. You know, and I'm looking and we're like, can we touch, can we touch, can we pick this stuff up? The props department was one of my favorite departments to visit. One, because they had a ping pong table. And two, because they had just like all the toys. You know, you could just pick stuff up and start playing with it and they were totally cool with it. We never really got to hold anything for too long because of course the props department was making sure that we weren't playing around with things, they didn't want anything to break. The prop department on ranges kind of hated me, to be honest, because I fiddle with things. <laughs> and I would just, in the, in the middle of a take, I'd just pick up whatever was sitting on the table and be playing around with it, and then all of a sudden it would break. And I'd awkwardly try and put it to the side. One day I went into the prop truck when my, uh, my nephew came to visit, and I started pulling out some of like the bad guy weapons. The prop guy let me, but I got to show him, and he thought it was really cool. Jason Frank, my problem with Jason Frank was, you know, he would take it and go home with it. You know, he would go, I want to show it to the kids at a party. So I'd, I'd come and i go, where's the, you know, like the Green Ranger dagger? Oh, it's at my house. I'll, I'll bring it to you. Like, uh, you know, but that, that was the only thing that they would, he would do it. I shouldn't say they. Jason, Jason Frank would do it. But I'm still tight with him. I'm, he's still bugging me. Ready? Ready. Thunderstorm. Thunderstorm. One of my favorite props was my morpher that I wore on my wrist because it was really cool. Well, when we first learned how to use our morphers, that was a great day because we all had these little things that we'd played with as kids and then suddenly we're holding them and we're using them to morph into our Power Rangers. Our morphers were cell phones before they were iPhones, so they were these flip phones. Those were kind of cool. Our morpher spun and You'd, you'd spin it off there's a few times, I mean, spinning off into the camera lens, spinning off into, you know, poor old Glenn's eye. That could be troublesome, but that was also a lot of fun working with things like that. Our morphers gave us the most trouble, definitely. Especially standing in formation with our morph, we kind of, we have to do that swipe. So there were a few times that we got a little too close. One time Najee got me in the face and broke the morpher in the process. There were times when it would like slip out of our hands and just like fly across set. Plus it comes out of the infamous ranger pocket, which doesn't really exist, where you just kind of grab from behind. So like you have to set it up in a way where it's just like in your belt or like in your back pocket and that always makes for problems. We still have some morphers laying around here, actually. <laughs> so just for the kids have had them over the years and we just never got rid of them, but we have a couple that are unopened. I actually, um, I gave mine away to an auction at the last Morphicon because I had my actual one from SPD. Mine actually had to be mended several times because I accidentally ripped it off. You lose your temper in the heat. Nobody's looking. You can't get it undone. It gets ripped. But we could just run to Walmart to get another one. Uh, I had a great moment. Uh, we were second unit. We were shooting some things somewhere else, and we, we had three units going. Well, on second unit, they needed morphers. I didn't have any morphers there. Literally went to, uh, not Target, to Walmart, bought a bunch of morphers, and I'm thinking, what a great commercial this would be, you know, for Walmart, where the Power Rangers wait in the morph, you know, and I'm, I, and I'm scratching out his, you know, the, the, the American ones said Mighty Morph and Power Rangers, and on what we did was it just says Power Rangers, and I'm putting on these paper stickers and, and driving, trying to get to the location. It was, we got a lot of speeding tickets because our locations were always at parks. There were always these last second things, flying them up. But yeah, that, that did happen a couple of times where I bought the toy at a store, took it to them, and then they morphed uh, <laughs> with the toys. I think that's what's so cool is like people that buy the, the morphers, they're actually getting the morpher that we actually wore on the show. It's not like we had this special you know, metal titanium thing that transformed you, you know, well, we, of course we did, but you know, that's, that's secrets, that's secrets. Ours were sunglasses, which I thought were really cool. The original morphers were meant to be the wrist morphers that they used in the Japanese, but they redesigned the morphers to sunglass morphers, solar morphers, which are awesome. So they were like a fully functional, like sunglass that you could communicate with and also morph with. When we did our morph, we flicked our heads and I must have been really, really violent with my head flicking. I'm surprised I didn't get whiplash because I 
bashed off about four or five pairs of sunglasses and someone told me like on about the third pair and it just chill out because they're about 500 bucks and I was like whoa and suddenly I felt really really bad and stuff like that so then um, you might notice my um, almost got a little little uh, ridiculous like lamer. They actually, actually sticker tape them to our heads so they wouldn't fall. Isn't that funny? Yeah they weren't I don't think I, I think they are like retail for 40 bucks or something like this and they've got a lot of them so someone was taking the mickey but yeah they were um they were fun i liked having sunglasses at it more all right you want your car washed in three seconds <laughs> Think not. There was some fun stuff to play with. We had some great things to work with. We had some great weaponry. I had this kind of axe thing. I got to throw that. I think I hit a crew member once by accident. I had to do this scene where I did like this kind of front roll and I got up on my knees and, I, and I'm supposed to throw this axe and they're holding up a sheet with an X on it and that's kind of my target kind of off camera. So I throw the ax and I just whoop, bonk the guy in the head and he, he's like, oh, it's like bleeding. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hit you in the head. Like felt terrible, but then we did it again and I, I hit the X, but. We had various props that we would use that you wouldn't expect to use as weapons that would be kind of the artful thing, particularly I remember Ziggy. I feel like he would grab spanners or you know, he would incorporate the environment around him as weapons. So that was always really imaginative. The Blue Rangers gun in, in that season was gigantic. It was, it was huge. But there was always amazing props. I mean, we had a pool table, we'd sit around in between shoots playing pool and there was always stuff to play with. I have a friend who makes fun of me. He'll oftentimes ask, why is your character's weapon a baton? <laughs> what kind of weapon is a baton? <laughs> and I'm like, shut up. I, I fought monsters with that baton. <laughs> and I beat people up with it. Our weapons were just amazing. This, those spin swords, I couldn't stop playing with them. The spin sword was one of my favorites, but it was quite heavy, so it was a little difficult to do our fighting scenes with that. They were expensive, though. Each sword was like $10,000, and there was one day we broke three of them. <laughs> well, I didn't. You could just see like how much care was put into keeping them perfect, and it's like we had to fight in them, and I'd be so scared to you know break it, or you know they'd freak out when you did, but you know what can you do? You're doing a fighting scene. My character had the nunchucks, Yellow Ranger had the bow, so that, I got to learn how to do nunchucks, which was awesome. It was a challenge for me to try and have some weapons that were outside of, of the uh, Sentai footage that would be unique to SPD, but that wouldn't promote violence, essentially. I kind of went more along the Star Trek influence with phasers that can be set on stun, but they weren't necessarily the action and shape of a gun. Sort of resembled the USS Enterprise. It was like the way you held it. I think we fired them two different ways because we didn't know whether we should fire them like that or like that. I made it as more of a defensive device where it protected your arm so you can you know, stop other things, it had a light, so it was like more utilitarian. I wanted to definitely have like some X-Files type moments where they were in the dark looking around. And then it just shot out a pulse, so there was no projectile. It seems simple enough, but it was such a challenge. And to be able to pass it through the ranks and have all the standards and practices and the lawyers and the PTAs and everybody sign off on it because it is a reality. I think, you know, a lot of people I see on the ranger board and something, like, why don't you do this? How come, you know, it's a, it didn't make any sense. There's all this stuff. I don't know if anyone else has talked about it on, on the interviews, but um, there's you just jump through hoops after hoops of, of people that are just trying to make the show not have a negative influence on children. And it's a strange subject. Any given episode is going to have some kind of kicking or punching or fighting or shooting or blowing up, explosions galore. So in the design process, trying to find a way to make these props that could be considered, you know, weapons and aggressive, but make them kind of seem safe and more defensive was something I really never had to deal with before. And I think what came out of it was some of the, you know, my favorite things that I've ever put to paper and then brought to physical life. Jen, I'm picking up mutant DNA. I see it too. Let's go. We would get these really great things, like, you know, like a watch 
that we'd have to pretend we saw a hologram on. The communicator, you know, that was, you know, me and Yuta walking down Melrose and going, hey, this might work and this might, you know, I'm proud of that. You know, I've been to conventions and people have had me sign them and I found them on eBay and things like that. It's so much fun. Those crystal balls that when we would get a Zord, these balls, we would do this and then, you know, they would stop the camera and then they would put it in our hands. It would be like it appeared. Those things were rad. <laughs> I wanted to steal one. I really loved working with my soccer ball, I gotta say. They let me do a lot of really awesome tricks that I'd kind of forgotten I knew how to do. I mean, episode one, I got to do that fun fight with the soccer ball and we got to add some other stuff in there. My personal, um, area of, of prop favorites was over in my workshop. I got a bunch of stuff up in the loft, over in the corner, I had my workshop, and it was really cool. You know, I'd do that stuff in my spare time too, not creating things that are gonna zap people, but work with wood, so I know I'm no more way around tools. So it was cool to go in there and like pick up stuff and go in and just work your way around the workshop, find tools that they had in there and flick them around and, and sort of get comfortable with them. So you really believe that RJ is in that that place and can work with those sort of things. Other props as well, like they'd have a shooting cheese gun or the pizza or something like that. We got to learn how to do pizza. We had to do like a full on like pizza training course. So we, I learned now how to know how to make pizzas. The props on Dino Thunder may be the most impressive that I have ever seen. It was amazing, you know, in New Zealand, how the craftsmanship that those guys have is just fantastic. I mean, they don't have prop houses there, for example. So you can't go and say, you know, I want to rent, a, you know, a giant chair for the villain to sit in. Let's show me five of them. No, they go out there with a hammer and nails and wood and they build you. Or if you want an ashtray for the specific room, they would make you an ashtray. <laughs> you know, it's not like they have a prop house, which was really cool and amazing about New Zealand. There's an episode where I get sucked into a video game and there's this gadget that I pull out and hook into the keyboard. That's probably one of my favorite ones. I had a randomizer, I think it was called, that, where I could genetically make new creatures. That was really fun. There were lots of fun sort of levers and dials and things to turn that were mesagog friendly. You know, my hand, sometimes I couldn't do things with my hand as well as I would have liked to. I gotta say, I'm not sure if it qualifies as a prop, but the mesagog chair was probably my favorite. The way that was built as sort of a throne really helped me get into the character. It was one of the first things that I did on the first day of shooting was kind of sat in this chair. And I put my Mezogog claws on there and I sort of rested them and leaned back and I thought, yeah, I'm gonna sit here and people are gonna come to me and I'm just gonna rip them, you know, a new one. This is just gonna be, this is a good setup. So I, I think the chair and Mezogog's lair in general was very well done. Hey, you guys came. Of course we did. Helmets, that was my troublesome one because I thought half the time like they couldn't even fit my head. But um, you're gonna have to deal with it because it's very, very important. And it used to make my nose look really big because they were so small. Some people think that I have, I had to wear leather gloves because I have a tattoo here on my wrist. But that is not why I had to wear leather gloves. It's more character based. Every time he wanted to use his telekinetic powers, he would have to snap off his glove and take it off, wave his hand, feel, do whatever with it. The reason is, is because the glove contained that telekinetic city and that if he had not worn it you know he would I'd be sitting on this chair and I'd and I touched a chair and I would know everyone else that sat on this chair instantaneously and their memories would overpower me and and so I had to wear these gloves I love that reason it was great and it made my character look badass but in sweltering heat having to take on and off a glove sometimes I'd have to do it very quickly I'd have to nail a mark so my hand would have to come in, to flip it around, unclass this, finger, 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 take it off, do my power, and then be like, <laughs> flipping it on. Oh, is there a scene going on? Oh, I don't hear anything. Okay, I'm ready. Actually, my least favorite prop, and this might be surprising, was I had a big staff. I had it with me all the time. And the staff was actually really heavy and cumbersome. It was taller than me and I think it was like steel or lead or something in the middle although it didn't look like it would be heavy. It was very heavy. The stunt team would come up with these you know choreographed moves that I would have to do during a fight scene or something like that and they're really fluid and graceful and this staff was always worked into it in initially and then 
promptly dropped because <laughs> it was really heavy and there's just no way to do that. I don't even know if you know, the directors or the, the stunt guys could have done that. So the staff was probably my least favorite because it was had to be there because of the storyline, but it was hard to deal with. So definitely my staff was the least favorite. Working for Saban uh, was a great experience. I enjoyed the crew. Everybody on that show was there to, to and had a, a great sense of humor, a lot of fun. Uh, I, I miss it, you know, I missed working. As soon as I walked away from uh, Power Rangers, you know, uh, you know, and I had nightmares working on the Prestige, uh, you know, walking up to John Nolan with a, a Billy Blue telephone going, will this work for, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, you have those kind of nightmares thinking that you, you want to bring that type of things, but onto other films. But uh, I, I, I just want to say I enjoyed it. You know, there's a reason why people still love that show. It had some type of, I don't know, charm that will be around for years to come. And I, you know, enjoy doing this. Thank you very much for the interview. So detailed. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful display piece. Very awesome. Morphicon live doing all the cool fun stuff at Power Morphicon and the guy next to me needs no introduction but <laughs> no, it, <laughs> it is a who ghost. are we talking about it's a ghost oh wow, wow. I'm a big fan of your work big fan of your work that old you know oh creak in the doors I love it man I love it you look good he looks terrible I know, I know he looks know. terrible he let himself go it's really sad it's really, really sad bad, really, really bad. sad I think he's anorexic <laughs> Cool. Jason Narvey in the house. How's it going, man? Oh, it's really good. You know, it's, you know, just hanging out with guys and ghosts and <laughs> sticking around here at, um, what is this place called? It's a Power Morphicon. Never and heard of it. It is a, it is a convention. For what? For Power Rangers. What is that? It's this television show that's been on. What it, is that? It, it was, it was, it's these superhero kids. What is that? It's a show. Television? What's no. television? What is that? Yes. <laughs> It's this magical box. Oh, you're talking about the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, when yeah. I was a kid, I was on the radio. I was on the radio with, with, with Clark Gable back then. I played a sidekick to, to Clark Gable, and it was, we, we did the funny nanny, you know? Yeah, yeah. We, we, you would, you would, you would you'd go up there, and you would... You would <laughs> did a little soft shoe, a little... little and then you gray would, mare, you would, she ain't what she, she used, used to be. be. Ain't what of course, she it was radio be. back then, so no one saw what the hell I was doing, so no one knew who I was until 1978. That's it, that's it. 1978. <laughs> so what are you doing here? I'm here hosting Power Morphicon Live. Yeah, you just said that. That's why we started this conversation. And now I'm now I, I'm, I'm new. This is why we don't hang out, dude. You got nothing good to say. You're like making up people that are next to you. We're like, what are you doing here? I am doing Power Morphicon. <laughs> you tell me what a television set is? Yes. How boring is it when someone does, is like, so how are you? You ever seen a television set? It's a magic box where actors are trapped and their souls are taken from them. You know, Andre's actually Amish. 
But yes. that's Amish. Not a lot of black Amish this guys, is, this, but he is. <laughs> yes, well, now that he's doing power more for <laughs> there's no more. This is my this is my outing. This is my other one. This is your outing. That's yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so is the wild oats. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you're obviously having a good time here. Oh, no, terrible. Oh, my God. It's terrible. All these fans. I feel like I'm slowly dying inside. <laughs> yeah, don't tell anybody. I mean, right, it's a no. private conversation, Between, right? No, yeah. Nobody's going to hear Just this, right? Just shoot me in the camera. That's right. I mean, what is the camera do but steal your soul you know exactly so yeah yeah next time i see a person with spandex i'm just gonna <laughs> well <laughs> i hate to, hate Sorry, to tell you but like right around us, <laughs> there's like a crowd forming right now no there's like, not yeah, these there people is. are not they're no there's i a, owe these guys money five dollars <laughs> ten dollars 25 cents i stole that guy's coat that kid's mom ain't come back for three and a half weeks and we're not gonna talk about that oh. <laughs> okay i'm just saying vegas weekend uh-huh <laughs> and you that's know. the story of Spike. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I just ran into Felix. He's here somewhere. Uh, yeah. He's here somewhere. That's good. He's here somewhere. I killed him and I stuffed the body <laughs> underneath the thing. It happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People kill sidekicks all the time. It happens. It happens. So it's ask me well, where Paul Schreier is. Yeah, where is Paul How Schreier? dare you ask me that? How dare you, is that the, sir? Is that the question you've been getting all day? Yes. They're like, where is Paul? And <laughs> you guys are linked I, to the hip. I've been, I've been cruel. Thing. I've been like, oh, he's really sick. And they'll have that moment where they're, where, 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 where they're like almost apologetic, like, oh, is it going to get better? And so the way to really play it off is you go, no, he's not. Look, can I just give you an autograph? Let's go. Yeah. And they're like, oh, my God. I'm like, no, I'm just kidding. He's fine. And they don't know how to deal with it. Like, oh, so, so he got better? Yeah. I'm like, well, you know, the prognosis. I mean, cancer comes and goes. He's, you know, whatever. So anyway. Here's an autograph, kid. You know. Oh my gosh! I love now that if someone's gonna see him and like give him this huge hug, like, oh my god, I'm oh so glad you're okay. Oh my god, I'm so glad you're alive. Like, what are you talking about? Uh, my favorite one was as I had posted at one point that that um, he got arrested in Florida for crimes against huge manatees. Yeah. And one or two people were like, oh my god, I had no idea he was an animal lover. Oh my god. I'm like, I don't even know where to start. What is wrong with that particular comment? Well, that was like you know Steven Spielberg shooting the dinosaur, right? Have you heard about that? No, he shot a dinosaur? <laughs> Did he shoot a dinosaur? You know, with the camera no. and be like, BAM! No, this is a real thing. He's like, hey, Barney, I love you. You love me. Oh, yeah. Boom! Well, that, That's that. what I think about you there, Barney. <laughs> ba -ba -ba. I was like, BAM! No one's looking. BAM! BAM! No, it was a real thing. It was he, he. It was a photo of him by by a dinosaur on the set of Jurassic Park, and people thought he literally shot the dinosaur and was like, right, like, oh, I'm never gonna support Steven Spielberg again because he shoots dinosaurs. I have lost my faith in huge manatee. <laughs> yes, that, that is just taking it out. Any faith I had left. Oh man. <laughs> so what are you doing here at Morphicon this week? What are you? What, what, are, you, what are you doing here? I mean, here. here. I mean, I'm, what are you, I'm parking what are you, cars. What you, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the working ballet, man. That's yes. what I got. Got my tie, so I'm, yeah, on, my, I'm on my cigarette break. You are snazzily dressed today. Thank you. Well, when you park cars for the Power Rangers, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have cars. a lot of jobs though. So you know, yes. you, you've been cops and whatever. So it like cops, it. valet, parking, <laughs> unemployed after Power Rangers. <laughs> God, what? I wish I had that job back. That never happens. That never happens. <laughs> well, I, mean, I was technically unemployed. I was a student. That's yes. not employment. No, no, no. I was paying other people to occupy my time. There you go. And now I am back. Yes, and now you're, uh, you know, you're a doctor. I am. I am. A, well, <laughs> turn your head, cop. Now, ready? <laughs> yeah, One, yeah. two. <laughs> yeah, no. If, if your script needs any emergency dramaturgy, I am there <laughs> with an it. editing pen. I need some punch-up jokes. Stat. Yeah, that's like punch-up. <laughs> good. That's good. funny. Yeah, man. That's so, comedy with the K. Oh, thank you. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm assuming you have. A panel. That's what I was saying. Like, oh, I see. Yes, <laughs> I have a panel at like four o'clock. Oh, cool. I have a panel at four o'clock. All right. So, so well, now what? What are we bantering for? I know we're talking for Shout just, Factory. Yeah, but we're just yeah, we're talking about Power Morphicon. We're talking about the Shout Factory DVDs. We're talking about ah, Power Rangers in general. Great. Yes. The okay. legacy and everything. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about it. We haven't said a damn thing about <laughs> it so far. What? Are, what are your thoughts? What are your What are your thoughts about the Power Rangers legacy? Well, you know, I don't have many thoughts about Power Ranger mm. legacy. What I think is that kids need positive roles models and so we gave them five and then we gave them six and then they only had five again and then we went, went back up to six and then we fired them all and then they got five more role models yeah. and then they got a sixth one but he was really the original sixth one then we got rid of him yeah. because he was a little pain in the eh. um, and so I think I think the legacy of Power Rangers is there should always be five guys until there's a sixth one yeah well but we and then we also have to have occasionally the Bulk and Skull, or the, you know, the, the... Oh, yeah, that's the thing. Adversaries turn. Well, of course, okay, yes. Allies turn. When yeah. push comes to shove, as yeah. Paulie and I like to say, heroes come and go, yeah. but idiots are forever. <laughs> yeah. 
recording that like the second Morphicon. Now we're like, dude, we should put that on T-shirts. I, I think so. We should so. put that on T-shirts. I think so. Do you feel like that's something that even the future, I mean, it's fun to see the action. It's fun to yeah. see the new Rangers. But do you feel like they need a new, like, Bulk and Skull type character? Like, just that, that random comedic yeah. sidekick? I mean, look, you know, um, any superhero world needs uh, precisely that. It needs a world, right? Yeah, okay. exactly, yeah. Um, if you had, uh, I don't know, Spider-Man in space, <laughs> yeah. what's he defending? Rocks? Yeah. You know, so you need other people in that to populate that world. So right. there should always be some kind of Bulk and Skull. Now, in our, our particular instance, Bulk and Skull were also the comedy of the show. Yeah. And so for a TV show about superheroes with no comedy, you, you kind of need that. Yeah. So. yeah, to mix it up. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah. So and then on occasion, the Rangers bring a little bit of comedy themselves from time to time, depending on depending on the season. So yeah, but, but, but not intentionally. <laughs> I mean, really, <laughs> they get some wacky situations here and there. Yeah, well, yeah. But but nothing nothing compared to you guys. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> So there we go. <laughs> so well, the new season's coming out. Not on charge. Maybe we can we can. Stick. Is it? What, tell me about it. I, I, they won't tell me anything. They're Ooh. just like it's. I, I've talked Didn't to. Didn't they just announce the new Power Rangers? I think that yeah. I think the cast has been announced or, or the or the new. Anybody I know? New. I don't know. Well, why are we talking about know. them? Because it's coming up. Because we have to it tell you that like Power it. Rangers Dino Charge is coming out on 2015 on Nickelodeon. See, I did ding. That was good. So we're doing product placement yeah, now. Yeah. I see. Okay. Well, you know the new 2015 Chevy Volt is coming out. Oh, that Are they sponsored? Can I say that? Bleep that part out. Sure. Yeah. You can bleep it on live TV, can't you? Of course you can. Not a problem. So, yes. So I clearly have taken care of this interview. Uh, <laughs> it's like I have fulfilled my obligation. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, it is always a pleasure to talk yeah, to you. Yeah, likewise, man. man. Yes, yes. It, cool. It's been a pleasure. Oh, it's always great. It's always great. What what next what uh what are your next stops? Where well, are you do what I'm doing right now, I'm working on we're developing a new play oh. in Chicago. Because you know me, I'm a theater actor. Yeah, so yeah, we're yeah. developing this play called uh, Red Rock, written by a buddy of mine, Jamie McGann. Very talented playwright, so it's fun to actually get back on the stage, you know, um, working on a piece that you believe in. That's right. fun. I love good scripts, good stories. Um I'm currently artistic director at Concordia University, Chicago, but next semester I'm also going to be a visiting professor at Franklin and Marshall College. Sweet. There you go. Take that, pal. How wow. do you like that for a doctor? <laughs> shout, like out, a shout out, shout out, shout out, shout out, shout out. Perfect, perfect. Um, so that's what I'm working on right now. So I'm taking time away from the film. All right, sweet, sweet. All right, well, thank you so much for uh, stopping by. Oh, <laughs> you don't even remember what you were thinking before. You're like, uh, thank no. you very much it's for this, this, we were going ruining this, this interview and, and it just <laughs> mentioning things that shouldn't have been said and we can't edit it out, so yes. you... Thank you for wasting this will be a five 10 minutes second, of my life. Yeah, this will be a five-second interview. Getting me fired. That was awesome. That was awesome. So go, go look up these televisions. I think they're going to be big. All they're right. going to be big. I, I think so. I think, yeah. And this Power Rangers thing. What? I think it's got a couple years on it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ten episodes. It's done. Jason Narvey, everybody. <laughs>
guys come up, use this microphone, and uh, address them yourselves. So if you have anything you'd like to ask, if you're thinking about it now, kind of move yourself for the aisle, start off with two inches of the maps, okay? So first, you guys are in an extremely unique um, situation today. Yeah, I, uh, I really like Samurai. Um, turned into Eckert. 
mean, what else do you want? <laughs>
Who's it? I don't know if you saw the Halloween episode. Right? So there is a, um, a bit where we're all in the tent. There's a fortune teller, right? And I'm in the cow outfit, yes. And um, we, all of us, were in that tent. There's also a lot of crew members in that tent. And we all had to really pull together to make that scene work. Uh, it took two days to shoot those couple minutes. And um, by the end of it, everybody's just tired and done. But then you walk out of the tent and everybody just congratulates each other. You know, it was, it was um, a real testament to team. I was actually sleeping in that scene. Yeah. <laughs>
definitely have, me and James would definitely have a car. <laughs> a van, some sort of food. We might have you know? Yeah, we it's talked about that when we first got there. Yeah. We went out there and we were like, we should have a car. No, Jake, no, should be driving around the car. Okay, that's a great question. Thank you very much. Next.
about how to get into Power Rangers? Uh, well, the manager said get your call from your agent. You get an email. You go to logs and collections. Always know you go, sir. No. 
When sure. you saw yourselves on TV for the first time and you watched an episode, how did you see yourself?
Alan Charles Rangers. Morphicon live and we're checking out all the awesome cosplayers here but I think we may have we may have started at the top right here this is one of the most awesome cosplays I have seen we have the full-on command center complete with Zordon face <laughs> what's up Zordon hey how you doing <laughs> I see you got all the rangers with you here yes I had to include them all they're all part of the team <laughs> this is great. So I'm going to break it down here. So of course, obviously, we got Zordon. We got the pink and the yellow ranger right here, checking out the viewing globe. We got uh, Billy, of course, is at the command center, uh, you know, working on the technology here. And uh, Zach's chilling his bike. And we, of course, got the green ranger just looking out in the distance, just thinking. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been real fun. It took me about a week to make this thing, and it's like I mean, it's not only been fun walking around, but the process of making it was actually really fun too. Seeing it actually come together and everything, it was awesome. Just. Even wearing it in my room, just like, wow, this is just so fun. I mean, I might keep this for a while, maybe for Halloween or something. <laughs> Are your hands getting tired carrying this around? Not really. It's just, uh, it, can, uh, it can rest on my shoulders, but, you know, just, just for the, just the support right now because it, it tilts forward so that people could actually see it instead of, like, actually leveled. So it tilts forward so actually people see it when I go. So by tilting it, for, uh, tilting it up right now just so that, you know, people could see it uh, for the viewers out there right now. I'm just fascinated. Like I'm looking, there's lights inside of here that he's got glowing on him. I mean, this is this is perfection. This is this is actually what they use on the show, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I hope. I mean, geez, if they can land me a job to work on the show, that'd be great. <laughs> it's it's awesome. Miniatures and the green screen miniatures, and then this was it. This is this is amazing, dude. I, I am I am just Thank you so much. thoroughly Thank you. impressed. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, yeah. This is a joy that you get coming to Morphicon. You get to actually see the command center. And it's funny, this Alpha 5 is like literally like steps away from us. So it, it's full on. So uh, this is amazing, man. Great job with this. Cool, Absolutely you. amazing. What's your name, dude? My name's Neil. 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 Are you on Twitter or anything? Yeah. Um, if you want to follow me on IG, I'm Neely Boy. N E I L Y underscore B O Y. There you go, Neely Boy. So, man, congratulations. This is amazing. Can All right. Really yeah, please. Can I get a shout out to all the Facebook Rangers? The team members every year, because I mean, without them, I honestly wouldn't be doing this as well. I'd like to give a shout out to my girlfriend for actually thinking of, of me becoming Zordon, and that was great. It's been great with her. That's true love right there. When your girlfriend tells you, hey, I got an idea for you, sweetie, dress up as Zordon and the Cold Command Center from Power Rangers. You, you got to marry that girl, man. I gotta, that's, <laughs> that is marriage material. <laughs> I've been told. I've been told. <laughs> Well, that's the fun you can see here at Power Morphicon Live. We're going to keep it coming to you. We're going to hopefully find some more cool cosplayers. But thank you so much, Zordon, for coming by. Thank you so much. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, there it is. I, I don't even know what else to say right now. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's talk to Alpha real quick. We'll make it a little super fast, super fast. All right. What's up? It's Andre from Black Nerd Comedy here at Power Morphicon Live with Shout Factory. And I am here with the one, the only, Alpha 5 is in the house. Yay, 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 Glad to let you out of the command center to come down to Morphicon. Yeah. Are you having a good time? Yes, yeah, a very good time. It's awesome. Cool, cool. Now, how long did it take you to put all this together? Uh, I did it, like, every day after work, about three months all together. Sorry. Authentic. I was like looking around. I was like, "Oh, Alpha Five! This is a real Alpha Five is in the house." So, uh, why Alpha Five? Why did you want to cosplay as Alpha Five? I figured there'd be plenty of Power Rangers here, yep. so you know, why not go with Alpha? He's very underrated, and he's the best sidekick in the world. He is. It's great. I mean, he has his own song from the Power Rangers movie soundtrack. I played him on my way here. That's it. Yeah. Do you know the words? 
No, I don't. <laughs> Read, quick, hurry, quick. Read us, Gilly. We'll make a sword. We got a plan. We can make it without Megazord. It's up to you to make it fly. Yeah, he. Ay, 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 ay. You're awesome, man. This is so great. I never thought this is this we're gonna we're gonna roll to the club. You and me are gonna roll to the club. Definitely. Me and Alpha Five. We would pick up so many girls. We're gonna pick up so many ladies. Both human and robot. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. (laughs) Thank you so much. What's your name, dude? Jezzer. Jezzer, do you have a Twitter or anything? I have a Facebook. Okay, can I get a uh, a shout out? Facebook.com slash Jezzer Zeus. Thank you so much, man. This is the fun you get. Power More for Con Live. Make sure you keep staying tuned for all the awesome stuff we got coming up. Thank you, man. Here we are live at Power Morphicon here. I'm Andre from Black Nerd Comedy. We're here at the Shout Factory booth. And we got all kinds of really cool cosplayers and characters right now. Oh my gosh, I don't even know where to begin. First off, we have a, a, a Pink Ranger. It's canon. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's a, it, as of today, it's officially canon. Yes. You, yeah, so, uh, so great. Uh, why Pink? Why did you decide to dress up as Pink? Uh, it literally started because my best friend, Sony, she literally made a costume of a, a female Green Ranger. I was like, and now I'm just going to make a pink just to add comedy to this. I like it. I like it. So there you go. Maybe next year that's when we'll have the male Pink Ranger. <laughs> so thanks so much for being dude. Tony. Tony, nice to meet you, Tony. Uh, you look really good in pink. I'm just saying. I'm not. I, I'm. I'm cool with saying that. I'm cool to do saying that. Thank you. Now we're gonna move down to Rita. <laughs> How's it going, Rita? Pretty good. Nice, nice. Oh, she's, she's she's calmer. She's cooler. I can't move my head. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, now, how long did it take you to make this? I actually commissioned this. Oh, really? It took about four months to commission. Okay. Cool. Cool. Now, uh, Rita, could you give us one of your signature phrases? I mean, I, I want to hear. I want to know if your your real voice can come out there. I have such a headache. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it's just like the show. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rita. And we can't have Rita without, of course, having Goldar. Yes, Empress. You are my highness. Yes. You give me a headache, lady. (laughs) Godar, how does it feel to be at Power Morphicon? Oh, how does it feel? How does it look like it feels? I'm loving it. And make sure you watch our video of Goldar and me on Kerrigan May and YouTube channel. You'll laugh your off. (laughs) <laughs> I love it. Rita, have you destroyed any Power Rangers today? Yes! <laughs> oh boy. Are we there yet? <laughs> I don't know what else I could say after that. And of course, we got a Green Ranger at the end here. <laughs> I, I, oh yeah, down with the green, <laughs> down with the green. Oh, where's you know who? Oh, guess he didn't make it. Oh well. All right. Did you have anything you like to say? Uh, uh, this is my first time here. I know this is the fourth one, but it's my first time, and I'm having an amazing time. I'm meeting a bunch of people. I'm seeing a lot of sights. Um. Yeah, if you have the chance to come down, please come down. It's amazing here. It's it's more phenomenal. Uh, you got guts standing next to me, pal. <laughs> amazing. Well, thank you so much to all you guys. Oh, 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 there's one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to ask Rita, uh, if you had a monster and you wanted it to you know, be larger, is there anything specifically you would say? Make my monster grow! Yeah! <laughs> I am King Gola, ruler of the universe. What are you laughing about? This is, just, this is the best day ever. <laughs> what an egomaniac! 
Oh, please! Look who's talking now! <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you guys <laughs> for checking this out. Thank you guys for checking out. <laughs> and yes, only at Power Morphic Con, guys. This is why you got to come to these things. They're amazing. Thank you guys so much. And thank you all for watching. And keep continuing to watch Power Morphic Con Live. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Nowhere, Rita. Uh, hmm. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Looks like the cat's finally got your tongue. <laughs> Hey everybody, Power Warfare Con Live is continuing. We're having so much fun here at the Pasadena Convention Center. But it's not just about Power Rangers. We got some <laughs> other things up in the house too. It's, you know, we, we want to give all the Saban love right now. <laughs> so let's get on to a little place that they call the Art Troopers. Virtual Reality v Troopers. Yes, it. We, we are, we are, we are, we are. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't even rehearse I that. Know, we, you, you, I was just wondering how I could follow up that last lineup. I mean, come on, you can't follow up Kerrigan and his crew. Oh, that was so I, much that's fun. That's a hard act to follow. I still got tears in my eyes. Right? It is, it is, I cried on camera, man. Those guys crazy. will go all day. <laughs> they will. All day. They will, they will. So uh, please, for anyone who doesn't know, introduce yourself, sir. Hi, how are you doing? Where, where am I at here? Which, oh, who yeah. wants to do where am I at? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Live. How are you doing there? Brad <laughs> Hawkins, Ryan Steele from VR Troopers, and also the voice of the Gold Ranger on Power Rangers nice. right here. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So how, how are you enjoying Power Morphicon? You know what? I'm blown away. Yeah. I uh, This is the first one I've ever been to. The first oh. This is only my oh, second con yes. entirely. And I did one in Houston a couple of weeks back, and then you come in here, and it's just everything so focused on power <laughs> on on Saban shows in general. Yeah. So it's so focused, and there's so much, so many fans here that from they love the voices, they love the characters, they love the collectibles, um, the merchandise. I yeah. mean, it's just <laughs> and everybody's accessible. You walk around here, and you see every single season of Power Rangers and and VR Troopers. And I mean, it's just it's great to have this much love and support in one building. Yeah. Now, of course, like I said, a lot of people, of course, are here doing like the Power Rangers stuff. But we, yeah, we definitely got our VR Trooper fans here, and you representing. And how does that feel? How does it feel to bring it back? I mean, we've got the DVDs that are out yeah. now. Yeah. You know, there's that love out there. And how does that make you feel to I've, be a I've part of this? I've signed a lot of Shout Factory <laughs> DVDs today, man. <laughs> nice. I'm kind of nice. jealous because I don't have any. I'm like, I'm going to have to pull in a favor here. Well, yeah, talk to somebody. You know? yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, I've signed a lot, I've signed a lot of DVDs. <laughs> and, uh, and you know what? It's I think you realize that you've, you've hit a moment, you've hit a milestone when mm. all of a sudden – 20 years later, you're 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 on Netflix, and 20 yep. years later, you've got a set of DVDs, and it's and it's such a nice reunion for all of us because this all started. I wouldn't be here without Power Rangers, and I know that. I always give it back to these guys because they created the wave that a lot of us have been riding for a long time. So yeah. I always give it back to them. VR Troopers had, you know, we had our uh, our fan base, and we uh, we had our moment, and uh, I'm grateful for it. But I always give it back to Saban, and I give it back to Power Rangers for. Uh, creating that opportunity for us. Yeah. Now, what do you think was special, particularly about VR Troopers? It kind of, I mean, obviously it was part of the Saban family. Well, what do you feel made it different from Power Rangers or some of the other shows as well? Well, I mean, the one thing was we weren't we weren't just limited to our colors yeah. uh, so much that we had a plot line that we were following, and there was one big plot line with me and uh, a missing my missing father. Yeah. So, and and what surprised me was. I, I kept hearing from more fans that they felt that it was it was just it was a more mature version of live action mm -hmm. for for kids. Yeah, yeah. But um, and it had a message that it was talking to kids about. Look, you know, we're all looking for something in life. We're all looking for um, mentorship. We're all looking for leadership. We're looking for guidance. And uh, I've had more fans come up and go, Hey, man, I saw that show. I was seven years old, and uh, you know, um, um, my dad isn't around anymore. So that show helped me get through. Oh wow! It, I learned something from you, and it taught me how to be strong. And it taught me, and maybe they got into martial arts, or maybe they made something out of their life and despite that they didn't that they didn't have two parents raising them so for me that was you know that blew me away that yeah. was the fact that I was like it was bigger than what I even thought that we were doing 
that's something I've noticed about a lot of these shows. It just seems like that people can sort of connect, even with all the craziness of you know fighting monsters or, or these superheroes and all this kind of stuff. But people find that personal connection yep. with it, you, and it seems like you noticed that as well. I did, I did, and with a cast of three, it was really more focused, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, I, I don't know, I was just really honored that we would have that many people attached to us in that way and even for Sarah Brown she had a great character where a lot of a lot of young girls were empowered by her and yeah. saw a very strong intelligent beautiful uh, character on the show and was like you know she gave she gave them hope she yeah. gave them strengths and something to look up to so all of us realized that we were we were bigger than what was uh, what was scripted it was yeah. it was bigger than that <laughs> yeah and i'm sure a lot of kids checked to see if their dogs could talk after that <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. I need to get Kerrigan back over here and have <laughs> yeah. him do a have him do a voice for me. I, I'm gonna mean, say, let's look at his helmet right here. That's right. This up. is pretty. This is pretty uh, intense, there, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's I had that guy made, and uh, I'm I'm excited. I actually it fits and everything, so uh, it's exciting. It's oh. exciting. I mean, this is one of those things that I'll always cherish. Yeah. Until someone takes it off my table. <laughs> <laughs> I'll nice. come back and be like, hey. Yeah, you gotta keep your eyes on that yeah. one, man. You know, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's good. It's a good one, though. Yeah. Uh, now, obviously, you may have noticed a lot of things are getting rebooted nowadays. Yeah. You know, would you I ever, would you I ever think that they should reboot the uh, the VR troopers? You know, be like a little. I maybe you're the dad this time. The you're right. I, I'm know? passing. On, they're passing the torch. <laughs> New generation. You know, VR yeah. sage. You know, yeah. like I'm so wise, man. Giving it, you know, advice. <laughs> yeah, you know, Star Trek and their next generation. Yeah, who VR knows, troopers man? The next generation. Hey, <laughs> I, I've got, I've got, uh, I've got two ears for a reason. I'm always listening. They want to yeah. talk to me about something. Uh, we can definitely have a conversation about it. All right, so listen up. Saman, VR Troopers, the next generation. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, thank you so much, man. It's so thank great to talk much, to Andre. you. Thank you very much, Andre. Appreciate it. No problem. And we're going to just keep things going here at Power Morphicon Live, so make sure you keep watching and keep tweeting us, hashtag Power Morphicon. We're having a blast here, and we thank you guys to continue to watching Power Morphicon Live. Awesome. The ADR process in Power Rangers was fun. I really loved the ADR. The, the ADR process was was nothing but fun. It was a big part of every episode. We had, we had quite a few hours in ADR every episode. The ADR saved most of the episodes. I really enjoy the ADR experience, generally. <laughs> ADR was a blast. It never, this job never felt like work. The hours were long and it was very intense, but it never felt like a job. It always felt like awesome. ADR is additional dialogue recording where you're standing in a voice booth. Originally it was a process of replacing dialogue that there was noises out in the field or something that uh, needed to be replaced for technical reasons. With a lot of you know TV or whatever, you know, you, you're, you're doing an outside you know, location, you have to come in and do ADR because maybe it was a little too windy or a horn blew in the background or whatever, and you're going to have to do the dubbing in order to compensate for the fact that on the day they weren't able to get the audio they're looking for. With Power Rangers, it is a world unto itself. Man, take a look at that ugly thing. Aha, Power Rangers, I knew you'd take the bait. Yeah, you and your playmates have met your match. That really just happened, right? I'm pretty sure it did. The show is shot in Japan first. So a lot of the footage that they have, it's edited with our stuff that we shoot here. So for example, when you have guys inside the costumes, or monsters and stuff like that. You go into a booth and then you uh, basically recreate the voices that you're hearing. It's this quite surreal experience of standing in a studio booth and shouting and sort of making huh, 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 noises into a microphone with no physical activity to accompany yourself. We're just going, ha, yeah, morphing, or you know, like uh, yellow Power Ranger kind of thing. So you would get hoarse, like there would be no voice left at the end of it. Sometimes if someone walked into that booth, you'd think something completely different was going on. <laughs> huh, ha, uh, huh. You look like a bit of a madman, but I think we've all, we definitely learned a new skill, a <laughs> new skill set there. <laughs> Yeah, 
Scott, who's the uh, the director of the ADR department, he made it incredibly easy. I directed most of the stuff. Uh, David directed a lot when I was doing other shows. Then I brought in a bunch of other people to direct when we were doing the Ford at a time because we had just around the clock studio being used. Working with Scott Page Pactor um, was incredible. He taught us to act, I think. Since we were all first time actors, we had no idea what we were doing. Scott Page Pactor is one of the most horrendous people I've ever had to work with. Um, now he, Scott is, uh, Scott is still a pal. He was a monster. It was just, it was so awful. <laughs> Yes, my queen. <laughs> Having someone like Scott there was was great because for us, um, we really didn't have any experience with ADR, especially on the level that we had to to do for for Power Rangers until we got on the show. He knew how to walk us through it. When we did something wrong, it wasn't hey, what is? It was just gentle. He was the gentle giant of the ADR, I should say. He was able to you know do a really effective job of holding your hand and, and coaching you through things um, in order to, you know, not just technically get um, the delivery that you needed because, you know, you gotta fit in whatever lines in between, you know, this point and this point in the, the, the you know, the frames, the, the shot itself, um, but also getting, you know, a performance. Um, so he was really wearing multiple hats because he would, he would write some of the, the ADR dialogue, a lot of the ADR dialogue, um, and then would have to, you know, technically make sure it was captured and then also make sure the direction was proper. He would play a line and kind of say, well, well, how about if you said it more like this? And we would try it. He'd do the playback so we could hear what had just changed. Scott was a god. He taught us how to act, I think. Whoa! It worked! This feels incredible! This is just what we need. Let's get to work. Kia! Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think we kind of invented the fact that the ADR and the post-production was part of the production. So we actually moved the uh, studio to the set, the ADR studio. It was on the set, we were upstairs, and uh, then when the actors weren't in a scene, we'd throw them up to us. And that took some real getting used to, 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 to really kind of, you know, build how well you could handle that portion of it. You're surrounded by foam walls, uh, and you have a TV screen and a microphone. You put the headphones in and the sound engineers cue you up to the line that you have to say and then basically you have to lip sync yourself. So you've got to get everything in time and say it with the right inflection and all that kind of stuff. It really is its own art form. It was a challenge, you know, and it was fun. You know, let's see if we can do it on the first take. Ah, okay, let's do one more. Um, I was a little bit off there and mixing up the lines and having to go back. And equally important, uh, when the Power Rangers were in the suits fighting, of course they still gave their dialogue and we had to to, to put our voices into what we were saying when we were actually in the suits. So you're just standing there in the booth, there's the, the fight, which you're not involved with because it's what the Japanese stunties have done their film um, previously. And then so you're just kind of matching and if someone gets hurt or something like that, you go, ah. Like normally in a fight, say you and I were having a little scuffle now, I'd give you about 8% of like, oh, far out, that hurt, or something like this. But in these, we're going 800% even because it's just got, we've got to show the, all the emotion here, which like if I was just showing you, I'd be like, you could kind of gauge that I was in a bit of pain or whatever, but you can't see it because the mask's on. So you just have to go, go for gold. And there's all these other sounds that they put into it as well. I could only end up doing an hour at a time because my voice would just get so gruff by the end of it because there's getting up movement, falling down movement, Every single little movement has a sound that needs to go with it. And it really is a completely different form of acting that you have to kind of work your way into because you feel like an absolute idiot when you first do it. And it was also a time, like, as, as an artist or an actor, that you could just go for it. I mean, it's high energy and it's super fun and it was cool. I, I liked doing that. The best thing about the ADR process, I think, is that we were able to see what we were doing as we were going. You know, we shoot these long days and you're not really sure how it's all turning out. ADR is a really great chance to see some of the footage come to life and some of the characters interacting with each other and it really helps the momentum for shooting. It gives you enough energy and enthusiasm um, to get through more kind of long days. It was a great experience because, again, Doing 40 episodes in a season, it's just volume. And you get so much practice where it just becomes second nature and you become consistent. I learned how to be, be, 
beat. I learned how to do that, you know, um, at a young age, and so which is also helps me further in, in uh, my career. People aren't going to know what that means, but it beeps three times, and then you have to say the line. <laughs> a lot of films and television will require ADR. So if you can get in and get out because you've had this training on ranges, then yeah, you're. You're pretty lucky and you're ahead of the game. I believe what we got in one year, a typical actor, if if they're working consistently back to back series, you know, it's the same experience that people would get in three years, maybe four, because they just don't have that much on camera experience. They're not they're not doing that many episodes. And even nowadays they're doing nine to thirteen episodes, not a full twenty two like it used to be. So we were very lucky. I mean, it was so great to be able to do that. Go, go! Well, well, if it isn't the Power Rangers. I always had to go in to do the evil laugh, but particularly for all the other villains who were in the mask, they, would, they were really great with all the physical animation, but they would actually hire somebody else with a very unique voice, a very animated voice, to come in and match the physical movements of the villains. Hey, how about a big bang? Oh, a lot of the guys who did the monster voices were, I was just a good look forward to them coming in. They're hysterical. Of course, two of them are gone now. Uh, Bob Manahan, who did Zordon at the beginning, was a good friend, and he was, uh, we just laughed our, our butts off. And uh, Bob Pattenbrook was a great, funny person. Michael Sorch is a great friend. He's fantastic. All the, the Barbara was great. We had a good time. We were all such professionals and knew our work so well and had worked on so many other projects together that it really was like a, a John Cassavetes ensemble. <laughs> They're right there for us, Goldar. Yes, my queen. This is perfect. <laughs> we'll get them, finally. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> this could only mean one thing. Lord said the true emperor has returned. They knew what they had to do. You know, it, I was just trying to help to tell them where the story was going and how it had to lead to whatever it had to lead to. Uh, there was only a few that I really had to work a little harder with, but usually they, you know, people had a clue what they wanted. Scott was pretty good, actually, with not getting carried away with all of that because it was pretty obvious. The scripts weren't complicated. You could tell right off the bat, you know, except when I played Magna Defender. You! I have no idea what you're talking about. Scorpius took my only son from me. I will not stop until I destroy him. Magna was a much more internal, uh, really fun character to play, but Goldar was a little more on your sleeve, and it wasn't a lot of work to figure out what was going on. You'll pay for that impudent ranger! You've not seen the last of me this day! I like to know what is wanted, and then I want to let it um, percolate in my head and, and uh, deliver it how I think I'm um, applying what I've been given. And then I want to be told, mm, no, that's too, well, I've, I've been told a lot that pull it back. <laughs> you know, I have a tendency to go you know, to, to the wall with it. <laughs> They're right there for us, Goldar! Yes, my queen! This is perfect! But generally, I want the chance to, to let it, uh, you know, marinate inside so that, I, that I'm coming from an organic place, naturally, and not trying to please and fix. It, it, it's, best, it's best when it's organic, but you do need some tweaking along the way. Here comes the queen! Hey! They'd bring us in one actor at a time and just go down the line and record the voice, the, the lines, line after line after line after line. It's pretty cut and dry. So the actor has to use his imagination. I would go in to record and sometimes I'd have, like Rita's lines were already recorded, so naturally I'm gonna hear her and then react to her. But more times than not, I'm going dry. I'm looking at the script, I see what she said or what Babu said, 
and what I say and then what happens. Sometimes, it, like say I had a scene with Barbara as Queen Rita, and uh, if she was recorded first, I'd have the benefit of hearing her in the headphones so I could play off of her. If I would record first, well, it would be vice versa. I used to think this line and the next person to be recording this line and this, then they all have to go seamlessly together. So you're not thinking of just that one performance. You have to think of how they're all going to work. And that was my style, still is, I guess. Oh, Lord said, give me another chance. I will not fail again. Quiet! Those Power Rangers are nothing but mere infants. You were defeated by children. You dare call yourself an empress of evil? You are not fit to destroy a cockroach. I have always said that, my lord. You go, belly rat. <laughs> We'd had Wallace sessions, you know, like sometimes I would be called in to do Rita and the putty, so I would hang out and go, later on. That was always fun, to be able to go in and do all the Walla Wallas and all the sound effects that were going on. It was, that was fun. And, and, and if you were in good with Scott, you got to come in and do other ADR for other things that, that weren't just your lines. So that was, that was a bonus. As much as we were all passing ships in the night, uh, we had an awful lot of fun up there. We were kind of a sanctuary a real lot of the time. The actors would come to us to get away from the nonsense on the set if there was, or they just needed a break. So we were the place they'd come hang out and be safe and not get yelled at by a A2 or, or a whatever. Yeah, so they, a lot of times the guys would always come looking to us. Is, is Jason Frank up there? Yeah, he's here. <laughs> Set him down! <laughs> so we did. Scott kept things light. Uh, a lot of screwing around in there. I think that's where, that was kind of like going to your, your, your favorite uncle's house where everyone screwed around and it wasn't as serious, so it was a good time. I think it helped that he had a son that was kind of growing up with the series at the same time. And so, you know, it was one of those things where outside of him enjoying, you know, the work itself and the people he got to work with, I think there was probably a little bit of a time with his kid, you know, he's looking at it going, wow, this is, this is really cool that, you know, my, my son's geeking out on, on the same thing that I go to work and do every single day. It felt like a ridiculous party every time we went in. We were there to do work, but we would, well, I would say laugh 75% of the time. And it's hard not to laugh when you're, I mean, the majority of what you're doing is literally, huh, ah, uh, ah. We were always messing around. You know, you stare at the screen and you have to say the lines that are on the script, but sometimes we would say things that just were not written and probably totally inappropriate, but <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> I used to do a silly thing where uh, I was sitting at a table and they're in the other room behind the glass, you know, like this. And if, if they weren't paying attention, I'd take my shirt off and be sitting there behind the desk and all they'd see is me, it looked like I'm naked from out on the other side of the booth. And so I have some pictures of uh, us doing new dubbing at different times. It was just silly. And it was usually a way to get, it's very intense on the set for them. It's very, it's not as intense with us, but if they're fo hyper-focusing and getting lost in their direction, I have to, I did something silly to get their mind off it. When you're burning film on set, uh, you, you, don't, you don't mess around. It's, you know, every single second is money. And, and in ADR, the guys were so great, you know, very relaxed. We'd be joking around and making fun of ourselves, watching it back, and okay, we gotta get back to work. And, and then we'd, we'd, we'd go back and, and, you know, knock out, you know, whatever we had to do. He is really fun to work with. He made it fun. So, uh, and he is a good director, a good director. He, he got the product out. Hey there, everybody. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's what I like. I like an active crowd, especially when you got one this large. 
make lots of noise. Yeah, you looked around. You, right? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. I have no idea if you have any idea um, who I am. I am. I am. Brian Wood. I do. I do. I like, I like this crowd already. For those of you who don't know, my name is Brian Wood, and I'm uh, the director of Blu ray and DVD production at Shout Factory. We're the ones responsible for uh, putting out the DVDs, everything up to, you know, we unfortunately we're not doing Samurai, Super Samurai, my course, my course, we're not doing any of those. If that's a trivia question, no, you'd be right. Um, but, uh, but we have done the other 17 seasons, and again, this year we, in January, December, January, we released uh, the 20th anniversary Power Rangers Legacy Collection in the head, the, the helmet. Um, now, just out of curiosity, who thinks it's Jason and who thinks it's Rocky? Rocky! So let me bring up uh, our, our panelists. We've got uh, Michael Lopez. We have uh, Mr. Wesley Wilkins. Tyler Rosetsky. I think I pronounced that correctly. You two will be right over here. Tyler, sir, you will be right over here. And then we've got 
Jacqueline Molina. Um, you will be sharing microphones because only one of you can answer at the time. Uh, but here's how we're going to do it. We're going to, I've got a list of questions here, and uh, I want to thank Jacob Brody for uh, providing our questions. The first 20 questions we got from the uh, official Power Rangers Trivial Pursuit board game. We decided to go maybe a little more authentic and go to a fan. Uh, for, for this particular uh, round, but we're going to do this in three rounds. You two gentlemen will be starting it out, um, and you will go head to head. Uh, as you can see, we're shot back to you. We have no muscles. There are no, you know, we, we put all the money into the legacy collection. So um, we are actually going to have you yell. Now, now here's, here's the key. I have to finish the question. Once I finish the question, the first of you to yell, go, go. You can complete it if, you know, if you're that gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go, go. I will call on you, and, um, and then you will give me your answer. The first to get, it's, it's a best of five. All four of you will be walking away with something, but we're going to find out who gets what. So. I'm going to start here. Michael, and you are Wesley. Whew, I got it, got it in that order. All right. Here we go. Question number one. What monster brainwashed Billy to steal the dragon dagger? Go <laughs> And I'm not going to say. Oh, you are an alternate. You are. All right, he might actually witness. Go go. Go go. All right. Uh, go Tan. That is incorrect. Wesley, do you have a response? It's a free response at this point. Let's just go with Goldar. Also, you may say it. Drama. That is correct. It is drama. Um, question number two. What planet did Serpentera destroy? So, 
Wesley, you are actually going to move on to the next round. However, you get to compete as well. So you will get to compete. Uh, we've got Tyler and Glenn. Gentlemen, do you think you can do better than three answered questions? Absolutely. All right, awesome. Okay. That's what I like, confidence. This is like Okay, all right. There might be some old Saban era in this list of questions. All right. Um, all right, your first question. Who performed the operation to turn a click door into a cyborg? All right. Glenn, uh, Glenn. And this. No, I'm sorry, you were Tyler. And this is for you, uh, Jacob. Um, Darkana! That is correct. Even as loud as that was. That was, that was good. <laughs> Next question. What was the name of the Magnet Defender's son? All right, Tyler. That would be Zika. That is true as well. Next question. How many starlight crystals were there? Um, however, 
you, sir, in third place. set of your choosing and uh, one of the Power Morphicon 2014 lithos that are um, that are in limited quantity. Um, you need to come find us at our booth or visit Sarah, the young lady there with the Shop Factor t-shirt to let her know which of the mega, so uh, mega sets you would like. We will have that shipped to you. You, sir, receive two mega sets of your choosing. You also get a Jason David Frank signed headshot. And you get the Power Morphicon Litho from 2014. So please see Sarah. Now, we go head to head to find out who walks away with the Legacy Helmet. Are you guys ready? You might be ready, but I'm pretty sure you are going to be able to take it. I'm trying my best. All right. OK, so we will start this round. Who were the three masters the rangers encountered in the spirit realm? Go, go. Yes, sir. That would be uh, Scott's brother, Marcus Truman. That is correct. <laughs> what was the name of Decker's sword? Go, go. Yes? Uramasa. My sword, Uramasa. Also, also correct. And maybe bonus points for the books. <laughs> Which ranger figured out how to form the samurai Gigazord? Go, go. Yes, sir. Kevin. For the win, I believe. Yes, that is correct. For Kevin. So, sir, you will be receiving three mega sets of your choosing. You will also get the Jason David Frank signed photo, and you will get the Power Morphicon 2014 lithograph. And you, sir, congratulations. You are now the owner of the Legacy Collection. Woo! Which we have here at the convention. Very well done, everyone. And uh, you can actually come find us at the booth. We will tell you where you can get that, uh, how you can get it. Oh, I hope you're local. Are you, are you local to the Pasadena, Los Angeles area? Uh, I am uh, uh, in Tucson, Arizona. Do not spend any more money between now and the time that you leave, because that helmet is going to be interesting. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. But, Congratulations. Um, it is a, an absolute pleasure to work on that set, and I'm so happy to see that we were able to give one away here. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, and I want to thank um, these guys. I want to thank Jacob Brody especially for helping with me with the questions. Um, you guys can, uh, can come find us after the panel. And we are back! Power Morphicon Live, readings that cannot stop our feed. <laughs> we are here again. And I'm not here alone right now. I have someone with me. Hello. How's it going? What's up, Mike? How's it going, dude? Yes, yes, yes. I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself. How's it going, everybody? My name is Blake Foster. I play Justin Stewart, the Blue Turbo Power Ranger on Power Rangers Turbo. Yes. He, he grew up, just in case you were curious. Cause I'm, I'm not the little kid. <laughs> yeah, because we were like, that was a kid that played that part right? years With ago. With long bowl cut hair. <laughs> yeah. they did, you did have a little bit of the, uh, the Mo Howard oh, going. I got, I got a lot of treatment for that. <laughs> so, yes. Now, you were obviously a, a special part of, of the Power Ranger Legacy because, yeah, you were, you were the kid. It was like, right. oh, here's this kid. And which, of course, a lot of us 
when we were kids watching the show. Right. That's what we always thought. Man, we cool to like get in there. Oh, he just did it. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. He's the kid now, I guess. <laughs> it was funny because either a lot of kids, you know, they, they loved me or they hated me. Yeah. So more hopefully that they loved me. Everybody I see now, they're like, man, I hated you back then, but you're cool now. I'm like, all right, cool, I'll take that. <laughs> it's just jealousy. They, were just, yeah, they, they wanted good. to be that ranger and grow right. up and everything. Instant growth spurt. Right. Stuff, so. Morph and grow eight <laughs> inches. It's all good. <laughs> so how did that happen? How did that come about of just like, you know, because you, you debuted in the movie, right. Turbo Power Rangers movie, and then, of course, came on at Power Rangers Turbo. Um, the way it happened was they actually designed the role for me, oh, I good. believe. That's what I believe because it was kind of given to me. I didn't audition for the film oh. um, or the episodes. Basically, what happened was I was filming an independent film at the time called Rusty a Dog's Tale, and the director of it was Shuki Levy, the producer of Power Rangers. Um, I was messing around one day on set, throwing karate kicks because karate is my foundation. I've been doing martial arts since I was four. And he saw me doing it, he was like, wow, you're pretty good at that. Yeah. You want to be a Power Ranger? And I was like, you're joking. <laughs> I, was, I was like, you're joking. Because I, I grew up on Mighty Morphin. I watched the show every single day when I was a kid. And then um, he was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to show you something tomorrow. The next day, he had Austin St. John and Amy Joe come to set. And that's when I knew it was real. Wow. So I was in total shock. I was like, wow, I can't believe I'm sitting here talking with Austin St. John, the Red Ranger. Yes. We were messing around, throwing kicks back and forth at each other. And then... Next thing I knew, believe it or not, I mean, it was literally within a matter of months, I was the Blue Ranger. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. Amazing. That's amazing. And then there cool. you were. You, uh, how was it like doing the movie and everything? It was awesome. So we started the film in the movie. We filmed all out here in uh, California. We did San Pedro. We were on the Ghost Galleon for like a week out in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Had to take a little boat from the big boat to the, uh, to the you know, back to the hotel or whatever the case may be. But it was fun. We did the movie. It took us probably about almost four months to film the movie and then uh we did 52 episodes of power rangers turbo and i did one episode of power rangers in space nice nice and then that was my time <laughs> and then it was off and yeah and then that justin was went done. his own way <laughs> well, well we wonder where justin is today he's just like out there yeah i think justin probably is uh, at angel grove teaching high school or karate or doing something he better be teaching karate <laughs> who knows who knows well, maybe he'll come back one day who i knows? hope so you oh. never know maybe a cameo appearance lionsgate <clears throat> i'm just what? saying you know what i'm saying <laughs> 2016, July 22nd. <laughs> just start wearing like a chain, like July 22nd, 2016. Just Lionsgate, baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, so what was it like being on the set? Because I mean, obviously you were the youngest right. on the set. So was that a, a fun experience, a weird experience I mean, for in the you? beginning I was, I was so like in awe because I was such a huge fan of Mighty Morphin. I loved it. But, you know, everybody took me under their wing, treated nice. me like a little brother. So it was one big family that we grew over the four years while I was on the show. And. I still constantly contact everybody that's on the show, and they all still try to treat me like their little brother when right. I'm taller than every single one of them. <laughs> that's it. So, that's it. Yeah. Well, it's funny though, because like some of these Power Rangers have an age. It's not like it felt like you like all like caught up. Yeah, some Walter way. looks exactly the same. <laughs> he has not changed at all. He is. Timeless. I mean, some of them have, but I mean, for the most part, everybody still looks the same. I mean, they were they were already grown when they were on the show. They yeah. were in their 20s already, so. Everybody's like, dude, is that really you? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm just signing autographs back here. It's not me. It's like, you, know? uh, you remember that scene in Lion Everybody King? Everybody doesn't when, uh... even understand it because I'm so big now and I'm yeah, so yeah. tall and stuff. People are like, you don't have the haircut and you got a goatee. It's just like, <laughs> dude, that's what happens when you get older. Yeah, they just expect you to be that, that right. kid, Justin, just forever. Like, just right. never change. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, how has it been coming out to Morphicon? Because this is not your first time. You've been no, to a no, couple yeah. of these. Yeah, I love Power Morphicon. It's in yeah. Pasadena, California every single year. I live 45 minutes away from here so I don't have to fly on an airplane nice. I'm not too fond of that yeah. <laughs> um, but I love it I've been here to 2010 2012 and now 2014 so nice and I heard I don't know if I, this is a rumor or whatnot but I heard this would be the last Morphicon what yeah that's what I heard no I didn't hear that oh, okay hopefully I, not because I, I hope, love coming to Power Morphicon yeah I hope this keeps get going get to hang out with all the Ranger family and get yeah. to see meet all our fans out here in California as you know I'm doing conventions all around the world now I'm traveling and trying to get out to a con near you as much as possible so yeah. Yeah. It's been great, man. It's great. And what do you feel about the sort of the legacy of Power Rangers? Like, you've seen all the fans walk around. I see some people wearing the blue turbo. Yeah, man, it's uh, awesome. you wore a blue turbo outfit. I did have my suit on today. Yeah. I did for a little bit. <laughs> but, I mean, it's... it's we just, Rita said, we, we, we got to go. We got to do this. Sorry, it's getting real. We just had a Rita laugh. We, we just got Rita bomb there. Yeah, I mean, it's great, you know, seeing all the fans out here. The Power Rangers is a huge fan base. Yeah. And it's always going to continue to grow, especially after, you know, the movie that's coming out next year. It's just going to, I mean, it's just going to blow up even bigger than what it is. And the fandom, the fan base is, is where it's at. I mean, if it yeah. wasn't for the fans, we wouldn't be where we're at. Right, right. So we love our fans 
as much as everybody else loves their fans, but I think it's more of a common bond because we get to actually go out to these conventions and interact with the fans as opposed to just social media and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And you're doing things, you're like, you're moving on beyond that. I mean, obviously, people come in to talk to you about Power Rangers stuff, but you've got some other projects in the work right yeah, now, Yeah, right? I do got a whole bunch of projects in the works. I can't talk about any of them. I don't want to uh, shoot myself in the foot, but, all right, all right. I mean, I'm doing karate. I teach karate up in Agora Hills Monday through Thursday. Oh, for real? Yeah, so I'm, I'm constantly staying busy. I'm back out on auditions, hitting the scene. I lost a ton of weight, so I just, nice. you know, and I... I just getting back into the swing of things is the main goal. Cool, cool. And you're you're ruling the social media right now. Oh yeah, I'm on social media all the time. <laughs> Facebook, Blake A. Foster dot seven. Uh, Instagram at Blake A. Foster. Twitter at Blake A. Foster. So, just trying to spread the word of the Blue Crew, man. Nice, man. Well, I'm I'm hope I can be part of the Blue Crew. Oh, you part of the Blue Crew yeah, already, awesome, man. Awesome, man. I might I might just come to your class and you know, teach you some, some movies. class. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah. Monday through Thursday, I'm uh -huh. there all day. I take my son there. He's 14 months and he's walking around already throwing key eyes. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, maybe so. he'll become a Power Ranger. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll get the cycle going. You'll be yeah. the, the kid Power Ranger. Generation. You better be a red one though. <laughs> <laughs> you better not be blue. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Well, Blake, thank you so much, yeah, man. Yeah, Andre, so thanks, man. It was a pleasure, here. man. Thank you very much. Absolute pleasure. So, check out Blake. Check him out online. And we're just gonna keep. We're actually coming to the final stretch, though. We're we're about to we're about to close things awesome. up. Awesome. That was the last interview. Yeah, you, you. I think you're it. I think cool. you might be the closer. Cool deal. So. Save the best for last, baby. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Well, thank you so much. We're gonna keep going on with some Power Morphicon Live before we wrap it up here. And uh, it's been a good time. So uh, we'll just. I don't know if we're cutting away to something or we're just gonna keep talking. Well, but, we... it, but first off, let me just thank everybody at home. Everyone that's been watching here at Power Morphicon Live, PowerMorphiconLive.com. I really appreciate that. It's been a lot of fun. We've been just basically giving Power Morphicon going on Power Morphicon, all day baby. here. So it's, it's awesome. It's been good. It's been good. And so thanks to you guys. Thanks to everyone who's been tweeting. Hashtag Power Morphicon. It's been great. All the people, the cosplayers here, we had some great cosplayers. It was a whole lot of fun. Power so, Morphicon, baby. Yes. Thank woo, you, guys. Woo. So I think, we're, I think we are done. We are it. We are, cool. We're getting the official sign. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Power Morphicon Live, the first ever Power Morphicon Live is officially done. Thank you so much, Blake, for bringing it home. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching. As I said, I'm Andre Meadows from the YouTube channel, Black Nerd Comedy. Check me out, youtube.com slash Black Nerd Comedy, at Black Nerd on Twitter. Big shout out to Shout Factory for taking care of all this. Check them out at shoutfactory.com. And look, even though Power Morphicon Live is done, those Power Morphicon deals on all the Shout Factory DVDs from the Saban names. I'm talking about Power Rangers, VR Troopers, Big Bad Beetleborgs, Ninja Turtles Next, Next Mutation. They are still on sale. They're going to be on sale for the next few days. So make sure you get into that. Thank you guys so much. Keep checking out Shout Factory. And they'll hopefully bring more events like this. And hopefully I'll get to see you guys again. But I'll see you on the internet. Thanks a lot for Power Morphicon Live. And of course, I got to finish off by saying, it's morphin' time. May the power protect you. Out. <laughs>